So I just spent on holiday 300 quid on a limousine and discovered that with the fee, it doesn't include a driver. I can't believe I spent all that money and I have nothing to show for it. Oh. Come on, oh. come on. I taught my dog how to play a trumpet. He plays in the underground to get around. Now he goes from tooting to barking. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. That's good. That's it's good. good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Two dyslexics are in the kitchen and one says, can you smell gas? And the other one says, I can't even smell my own name. <laughs> 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 and I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Oh, go, on, go, on, go on. Go on. Okay. So Comic Sands and Helvetica walk into a bar. They go up and ask for a drink. The barman says, sorry, we don't serve your type here. Oh, oh God. I thought you were going to be the font of all knowledge, but apparently no. not. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Let's just strike through that and underline it. Anyway, right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Black Dog version 2, episode 140. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm Jim. I'm Elton. And yes, we've been away for a couple of weeks. That's my fault. You know, sorry. And uh, we're going to so- see how everyone's fortnight's been. We're going to see if there's any feedback for last last week, last <laughs> whenever's episode, um, which was Arrival. And then we will move on to this week's movie, which was Jim's choice, which is... The Day the Earth Caught Fire. Yes, it is. It's The Day the Earth Caught Fire. <laughs> everyone's going to have a really rotten day um <laughs> so we'll be doing that um it's a, it's apparently a science fiction film not a documentary well <laughs> <laughs> apparently but anyway we'll get to that in a while so before we uh go too far let's see how um how everyone's fortnight's been and we'll start with you as ever jim how's it been sir um, been some ups and been some downs and been some bloody strange. <laughs> okay, you, you have my attention. Yes, uh, if anyone that follows me on social media, you've probably seen the pictures, and mm-hmm. I didn't speak on it because um, it rather threw my podcast schedule out for the week. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it was a uh, it was the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Oh, everyone was asleep. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like the old Christmas poem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dogs were asleep, sleep, fish were asleep. Mm. And at half past two in the morning, woke to the sound of what sounded like, you know, those big glass display cabinets full of china? Right. Like one of them being tipped over. Oh, right. Which is weird because we don't have one of them. Right. <laughs> so I got out of bed. My first thought, because that sounded like multiple breakages. I thought, Christ, someone's thrown a chair through the front bay windows or something. Mm-hmm. So I legged it downstairs. No, no, door's fine. Bay window's fine. Kitchen mm. window's fine, back window's fine. Mm. And by this point, Teresa got up, turned the light, and said, I think you need to look in the bathroom. Right. Now, it, on our bath, we have um, a shower built in. And uh, mm. we have, like, a, we had an, when I put it in, I, put, I chose for a very fancy um, glass shower screen. Mm-hmm. Just like on a hinge on the side of the bath. Mm. Rather than those curtains that always go moldy. Yeah. And what had happened is apparently. Um, about once in every hundred and uh, no fifteen hundred times, mm. these uh, glass panels are just prone to explode for no fucking reason. What? And literally, it just—you can see from the tiny bits left, <laughs> the crack pattern, mm. where just in the middle of the age, it went boom and exploded. There was glass everywhere. Jesus! And it shatters like the safety glass, but right, it's still sharp and there's still the very small shards jesus um <clears throat> and so i said kind of like the fuck <laughs> you know i had to look i had to look online but apparently it's just the mm. the industry for a long time claimed it was people doing it themselves or right. they weren't fitted correctly before finally fessing up it's actually it's a side effect of the manufacturing process mm. and once every 1500 times on average they would suddenly explode for no reason and they tend to favour around between being two and three in the morning, apparently, for some odd reason. Fucking hell. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, basically I had a sink full of glass, a <laughs> whole bathroom floor, just the glass all the way down the stairs. God, if you'd been in there, mm-hmm. you'd have took a bit of damage. Yeah. Jesus. Um, it's like a claymore then, going off, yeah, isn't it? Basically. Wow. 
I mean, it did actually. There is actually some marks on the bath where it was caused by flying glass. Bloody <laughs> it hell! Took what li- gouged little lumps out? Right, even, even like you know, given that it's safety glass. Yeah, yeah. Wow, because <laughs> it, it must go with some force. But it was really. I mean, it sounded like a shotgun, but you know, being fired into a glass cabinet. Mm. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Terrifying. Especially <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the night, and he was going to write. Mm. Again, fetch me the brush. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll clear a clear a path to the toilet. <laughs> make a safe path, and I'll just deal with the rest in the morning. <laughs> Teresa, <laughs> hand me my tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was quite something, but yeah. So the rest of it was kind of going, well. I could get another one put in, but you know what? I'm not mm. really keen on the idea now. No, no, I can <laughs> Shall see I buy why. one's extendable shower rails so they can do the spring loaded and just like mount them so drill the nice. T- yes, I think we will. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Why not? <laughs> yes, yeah. So if you've got one of those, or, or glass sh- tempered glass shower doors as well, and mm. they're the same stuff, do do be aware. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. <laughs> keep it's it rare, but not that rare. That's the point. <laughs> keep it peeled. Keep them peeled. <laughs> bit, bit of short tailor there. You know. Watch out! <laughs> Don't forget to laminate. Don't forget to laminate your shower glass. <laughs> <laughs> I say I, I do it all night just from the adrenaline. <laughs> right. like, the fuck has happened here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so I was over there, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Right, where's the dagger? I know where that is. I know, yep. I know where the bat is. <laughs> See, if you come in my house, you're going to fucking get it. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, it's like poltergeist activity. Nice. So, you're a, uh, you're a, uh, you got all, you got your PKE meter out. And... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I went online first and it was kind of the, this does happen. Yeah. Um, and it, I was just a textbook case of, mm. Because apparently they have a tiny flaws in the glass, and some it just takes a slight temperature change. It suddenly sets off a chain reaction. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's no way to check for it, like looking for air bubbles or no. Oh no, shit. it'd be, in, in, be indetectable. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yep. So, I put pictures on the the chat on the chat of the uh, devastation. Okay. There we go. Oh Coming right. Up now. Okay, here it comes. Hold on. Two photos. The fuck. Wow, <laughs> that is quite impressive. It is quite impressive. That is, yeah. <laughs> that glass screen broke into into an awful lot of little bits. Yeah. So I if any... brought a mate and broke that, broke that as well. Yeah, it looks like it looks like someone's actually blown up a whole box of uh, Fox's glassier mints in the bottom of your ba- it bath. Does. There, <laughs> yeah. Um, shoot the glass. Shoot the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Yeah, yeah. so a little um, shower ball, a few laughs. Yeah. So, if anyone's listening to us, you know, because you never know where people are listening to podcasts, but you know, if anyone's listening to us in the shower and there's a glass, there's a glass uh, <laughs> siding, you know, a glass shower curtain, get out, get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Be very hazardous. <laughs> yeah. Wear your safety goggles and wellies in the shower, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You just never know when it's <laughs> when it's gonna take a turn. Oh yeah, back to shower curtains for me. That's what <laughs> Yeah, I can't I can't blame you to be honest. <laughs> yeah, put up put up with a little bit of mouldy shower curtain throwing it away every sort of couple of years. It's a lot better than a lot better than getting blown apart by some <laughs> random rogue <laughs> glass shattering incident. <laughs> Just like sudden explosions for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, <hell>. so between <laughs> that and Elton's mum's conservatory going bang, um, whose glass is going to go next? Mine or Darren's, do you reckon? <laughs> Darren? <laughs> Who's planning DIY? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to be my glass because I'm actually wearing glasses at the minute. So, you know, if it does oh. go kaput, then um, <laughs> as long as it goes out away from my face, then... That's fine, but normally shards of pointy glass in the eyes, not mm. good for uh, you know good eyesight. I think no, no, probably yeah. not. No, yeah, yes, yeah, just oh. nah, okay. nah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Well, with that public safety announcement out of the way, Jim, anything else, sir? Yeah, I'll just uh, put another right. picture in the ch- chat of the shower curtain. I said to Teresa, <laughs> "You choose one." <laughs> Surprise me. Oh, okay. 
Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got, I've, I've got a boner pit with you with this. Okay, Jim. Thanks. All I've got to say is thanks for choosing the one you did. All right. Okay. Why? Well, cheers for that, mate. Well, I'll let him say which one he chose first. Yeah. And I will explain. Well, well the shower curtain shows a shower curtain, and peeking round it is a velociraptor in a shower cap. In That's a very exactly. fetch, in a very fetching pink shower cap, yes, holding yeah. holding a little sort of showery pom pom from its mouth. <laughs> yeah. Clever girl. Yep. Clever girl, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, this is this is a thanks from the the person who lives with someone who's you know has a a, a great liking of Jurassic Park. <laughs> Saw that shower curtain and went, "We are having that." <laughs> oh right. It's like ah right. I thought okay. you. I thought you were going to say she has a love for old dinosaurs, and I was going to say <laughs> finally well, you well. admit that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i know i'm old that's it <laughs> that's it I'm, I'm at the age where you know it's it's oh i, I don't ha i mean I've, I've been through the age where you have to worry about being cool and i finally got to the age which is the perfect age for me because i was never cool and i don't have to worry about it now anyway <laughs> so there you go starting you to smell been... like amber <laughs> <laughs> yep. Amber, what, who, why, why, what does she smell like? No, oh, oh, God. Oh. oh. By the way, uh, I have managed to land the Werther's original sponsorship now. So um, <laughs> we're good. We're good. Are we? We're sorted, are we? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I am now. That's it. That's the retirement fund sorted. <laughs> oh, my name. Yes, yes. It's, it, it's Boulders Barnard. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll get to in a minute. Oh. <laughs> yes, indeed. General Boulders Barnard. General Boulders Barnard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, yeah, we'll put we'll put the shower we'll put the shower disaster zone pictures on the Facebook group. I think. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, that's, have to be seen to be believed. Yeah, that's quite that's quite the thing. That's quite the thing. It might also save. Um, it might also save uh, Martin Thompson's search history looking for Velociraptor's sh cow shower curtain <laughs> explosion. That's a bad search today. <laughs> yeah, Velociraptor's shower curtain. Yeah. Cool. Anything else, sir? Uh, I think I'll leave, of course, not trouble for one night, so I'll leave them there. Okay, cool. Fair enough. <laughs> in, which, in which case, we'll move on to you then, Elton. How's, how's it been? Uh, it's been pretty good, actually. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Okay. Um, this weekend, we had a house full. We had Jacob and Maddie stay, come up from Greenwich and uh, mm -hmm. crash over for the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, then my mum turned up with her sister, mm -hmm. so we had them stayed over as well you mean your aunt yes my aunt her sister <laughs> yes mm. yeah but the sister of your aunt i'm confused oh there, there's more people turning <laughs> the up sister of my aunt is my mum is ah oh yeah oh i feel as though uh explanation of life in general was just opened up to me there wow <laughs> transcendental mm. <laughs> Said Jeff. Mm, yes. Mm, He's got ah, all Jeff Goldblum. Mm, Carry on, yes, Elton. Mm, <laughs> so your mm, mother and her mm, sister have turned up. Mm, yes. Houseful. Mm. Bananas. <laughs> anyway, they, they turned up and there was a car show in the village. So we decided to go up to the car show, mm -hmm. which was really nice. Walking around that and... Seeing all the sights that there are, you know, mm -hmm. if you're into cars, then you saw many, many types, mm -hmm. and different stuff. Um, a public service announcement, though, for people who do go to car shows. Mm -hmm. If you have classic cars or you right. think that they are classic cars. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got to remind myself to, to mention this as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, if you have, like, classic cars, maybe... Mm -hmm. Mm. Maybe you don't leave the uh, the the juice drinks in every cup holder that oh, you have. Oh no! Or the USB charging thing in the cigarette lighter, because you know it takes away from the atmosphere of the nineteen fifty nine car that you're looking at. 
Oh right, so I this, I was expecting some kind of my major disaster. I didn't know you were going for the purist route. Nineteen no, fifties no, no juice I, cartons, you say? I, I don't know what you're moaning about, Owen. Have you ever seen those information films? Why are you looking so glum, Mister Chubbly Water? Well, it looks like my mobile phone is running out of juice. Why don't you just use the USB charger inside your car? <laughs> why I forgot about that. Yes, why don't I do that? Bye, Jingo Smithers. I think you've yes. got it. <laughs> uh, that way, I can listen to my Chinchy Strider album all the way home. <laughs> 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 okay, so did she strike? Deep cut. Yep. Dead with it. Street level, man. Street level. So I was listening to Turntable Dave, the tur- devastating Dave, the Turntable Slave, while banging tunes on my in my S Type 1950s Jaguar, <laughs> and it ran out. What could I do? <laughs> anyway, so more than I like. So riding around the town with the top down, singing to the latest Taylor Swift. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> You'll have no idea, Jeeves, but actually, I was driving along with my top down in my old, my old 1950s car, my little Model T Ford. At which point, my my music, wet ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> my wet ass, my wet ass pussy went went off too loud, and it did disturb the young lady walking along, perusing along the promenade. <laughs> she down near dropped her dropped her cotton cotton candy. So she did. Juice box. <laughs> really, they dropped a juice box. Sarkis to the side. I know you hate my ninety eight. You're going to get yours. <laughs> Tell that last motherfucker. <laughs> Mr. George Forby and Public Enemy. <laughs> <laughs> my Uzi, my ukulele weighs a ton. <laughs> a gang of motherfuckers on the deacon shit want to act like, sound like, bite ass jive stealing motherfuckers. <laughs> it's turned out nice again. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I want to carry on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, I'm crying. Ding 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 <laughs> George Forby with a, with a fucking goosey down his front. Anyway, hi. Oh, then, my <laughs> name is. My, my name, name is, is, is. My name is. Chicka Chicka. Thorbert. I, I can't remember his name now. <laughs> Fuck. Mr. Slim Shady. How do you do? Where's me washboard? It's by my coke and hookers. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I'm listening to the latest ditty by Carl Porter. Fuck the police. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh dear, go on, Elton. So, so, so they, so they're not being, they're not being genuine with their interiors no. on their classic cars. They're not cars. being real, G. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> all these, all these. Like really nice classic cars from fifties all the way up to modern day. Mm. <laughs> did the overbouncy <laughs> suspension oh, on the well, Model Four T? Did that really kind of take I, you out? I'm of it glad as well? you re- glad you reminded me because that was the other thing I wanted to bring up. So there was this car with all the the pneumatic suspension. Okay, and every now and then this guy would turn it on. Mm. And uh, show off the the suspension as mm. like a little ride for the kids to jump in and enjoy. Yeah. And mm. so he'll he'll turn the engine on so it'll prime the system so it'll be sitting there, ra- it raise itself up, mm. and uh, tick over for five minutes while it's uh, priming the system. Mm. And then he'll stop the engine, he'll mm. jump out, he'll let some kids pile in. Mm. And then he'll come along with a pendant that is attached to the car 
and uh, flick some switches and the pneumatics will act at the front and back and it'll bounce all over the place. Mm. Or so that's what you think should happen. <laughs> right. So he had it primed. He, he got the people in. Mm. He'd walk around. He'd pick up his pendant. And instead of it being in like a, a, a rapper video you know when they're bouncing up and down and yeah. they're, they're bouncing about six foot up in the air aren't they they look yep. incredible yeah this thing moved about four inches up and then dropped and then four inches up at the back and then dropped and then went up onto the floor and that was it <laughs> it was it was frankly pathetic sounds like my wedding night <laughs> i'm done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't call you two stroke Metcalf for nothing, do they? <laughs> Four inches and. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, carry on. <laughs> I'm just making myself laugh now. I don't get it. <laughs> no, it was mm. it was pathetic and really, ra- rather I'm rather ashamed of the establishment. And uh, are are you writing a sternly worded letter? I shall be, yes. Right. With Who, my, my quill. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson, take this down. Knickers. <laughs> anyway. You know, those kind of cars that do that thing with the suspension, just yeah. watching them when mm. they sort of like go at funny angles. And it just reminds me of that car, that taxi from Roger Rabbit, when <laughs> it gets the, the acid on the wheels and you see it tiptoeing. I, I just yes. think of that automatically because that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's that kind of um, it's that kind of comedy clown car thing. Mm. I, just, I just I keep expecting the doors to fall off and about twenty twenty people to just explode out the back, <laughs> out the mm. out the boot. <laughs> Um, Chased by the Keystone Cops. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> while, while while some little piano goes. <laughs> Cream pie. <laughs> Sorry, uh. <laughs> it's the twenty first century, Dal. That doesn't mean what it used to mean. Hey, we've yeah. gone back in time. I thought, but, you know, to <laughs> when cream pies were actually a pie made of cream. Oh, that still doesn't sound right. And a brick tease was an embroidery stitch. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So, so in keeping with the car theme, the wheels have indeed fallen off. Yep, there they go. Uh, There they go. (laughs) Straight down the hill. Anyway, so so that that was my weekend. Oh right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, we completely derailed the entire thing. Just... Oh, that was fine. Yeah. I, I had two things to tell you about USBs in a, a car that really did make the, the grade. That was it. What, what model car was it, just out of interest? I don't know. It's it was a full pink, Model T, wasn't it? wasn't it? It was a full Model T. No, it was, it wasn't. wasn't it? No? <laughs> no. Hold on. You're, you, what do you do? A podcast about what? Cars. Yeah, and you don't yeah. know what model? No, I, I didn't know what this thing was. I, I, I barely looked at it. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. Whatever. whatever. It's not my thing. It's not honestly not my thing. What, cars? No, that car, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that particular car, that one car, that just that oh, one yeah. there. I see you, car. I, I turned my nose, you. I was like, no, no. Was it? No. Was that car in Star Wars Episode One? Oh. <laughs> no, no, Lee, 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 Lee. You're you're here now. Was that car? In that one, was that car in that Fast and in? Furious? Oh, right. yeah. oh yeah. Was that car in Fast, Fast and, and Furious, Furious Two? two. Was... Tokyo Drift. Was that car in Fast, Fast and Furious? Furious? Too Fast and Furious. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, Tokyo Drift was number three, wasn't it? I yeah. have no idea. I'm, I should know I'm this. Pretty... I'm blissfully yeah, ignorant. <laughs> I'm blissfully ignorant. I only saw the first one the and DVD one. DVD heist. And and one. I only saw the first one and I saw a submarine, um, but I have no idea what it was. And Charlie Theron appears to be driving it. Yeah, so that was about doing it. A, a bunny hop in a submarine. Was that? Oh right. Okay. A wheel, no, it's a wheelie in a submarine. That's it. Wheelie onto a, a submarine on a, a field onto an ice bed. Yeah, that's right. Right. In which case. I'm I'm just as happy being bliss or ignorant. I don't want to follow that joke up. I don't want to go through all ten of them. I know there no. are ten, but I have no idea what they're called. But don't forget the cartoon series as well and the actual game. You got to, got to remember them. And it's fast... like it's like cinematic universe. This is what it is. Is it? It's all connected. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, the one-legged dog the is America. One. Well, yeah. The one-legged yeah, the dog. Fastiverse. 
The Fasty Verse. Yeah. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is the Fasty Verse? <laughs> I don't know. It's a diet plan or something. It's, um, the, sli- the Slim Fasty Verse. The Slim Fasty Verse. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like a McDonald's milkshake. The Fast and Fury Verse. <laughs> oh my God! The fly. <laughs> yeah, you have a post-credit sequence with fucking Nick Fury turning up. Would you want to taste the flavors? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're yeah, part Jer- of a bigger family now. <laughs> family. You think family. you're the only one on a diet, Tony Stark? <laughs> I'm afraid the McFlurry <laughs> machine is not working. <laughs> but how Step am I going to feed from the donut? Yeah. 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 But how am I going to feed my family? <laughs> Fast and familyness. The family. Mate, is it a family tie sequel? Fast and Furious. Yes, so, so, I just keep family. Family. I'm Groot. Oh shit! Wrong franchise. <laughs> family. Just it's like one of those <laughs> eight track tapes. You just got. You just press it once, and it jumps the track, and it just goes family, family, or family, and then it click another one. It goes Groot, 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 <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> the Vindy's the Vindy's eight track tape. Oh, and don't forget. Oh God. There we go. What the fuck is mm. that? That's that? Iron Giant. Vin Diesel was the voice of the Iron Giant. Oh God, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's good at these monosyllabic kind of roles, he is, isn't, isn't he? Isn't he? Just one word to say as a line. Yeah, right. That's it. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hemorrhoid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> what made you say that name? <laughs> Fuck. One day we got to do that movie. Hemorrhoid. Wasn't that a hit for Brown Sabbath? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, man. Quicker than the flash. Excellent. <laughs> Again. No, no, anyway. Um... <laughs> that deserves two finger guns. <laughs> Sorry? Shoot him a Gavin. There we go. <laughs> Right, El- Elton, anything else, sir? I was done about 15 minutes ago, I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> All right, over to you then, Dal. How's your fortnight been? Okay, so uh, first of all, it was Maria's 15th birthday. Okay. Uh, the past Happy two birthday. weeks, so uh, indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we got her a gaming laptop, a very mm-hmm. good one, really mm-hmm. good one, actually. Um, we we got it out of the box set it up on the network got all the uh updates downloaded and everything mm. like that it was all going fine you know rebooted it a couple of times wonderful then it came to her actually getting the laptop to actually use it to play mm. she's booted it up and it's come up with a bcd error which is basically the boot file on windows 11 oh right? so there's it's your right. issue right there yeah there's your issue right there so anyway, went looking around for some uh, sort of like solutions for this. Scott mm. suggested a few things, tried loads of stuff on it. Nothing was curing the problem. And then I found one random website that had one instruction on it that solved the problem. And Did it say, take it back to PC World? Yeah, you think so. <laughs> but no, it didn't. It didn't. It was just basically BCD, was it? BCD boot space C, dot, uh, C colon backslash windows. Mm. It copied the file over. I thought, okay, maybe this will do something. Rebooted it. All of a sudden, the Windows login screen is there. So that was mm. it. So I cured the problem. Woohoo! Wow, that's your, that's your first IT solving problem in years. That is, yeah. You should yes. have logged that as a ticket. I've just been on. I've just been on autopilot most of the time, mate. So uh, you know, <laughs> this is it. I've got my little little book of solutions. <laughs> so there we go. You know. Mm. That's it. I am like Roy from the IT crowd. I do have actually a rec- uh, a recording of my voice with various. I've have got you, AI working for me now. Have you this tried it. turning it off and on again? Well, that yep. works. Thank you very much. Click. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, so we're we're uh, so that had been resolved, and so mm-hmm. um, waiting to try her first sort of like one of her birthday presents on there, which was I got her a copy of Stray. Mm. which is the uh, the game about the cat trying to escape the robot city, which yeah. looks absolutely brilliant. And I've got to say, looking at some of the trailers, the person who's created this game has really studied cats well because 
um, some of their annoying habits is used as ways of solving problems within the game. So, mm. um, you know, you've got like, uh, give you an example, you've got this big fan that the cat's got to get through and there's a bucket sitting nearby. <laughs> you just mm. see the cat go up and go, tap, 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 tap to the bucket <laughs> and it takes the fucking fan <laughs> out. And it's mm. like, yes, this is great. Fantastic. Is it- does does it solve the game by sitting in the middle of a, in the middle of a crowded room and just licking its balls? Well, you know what, Lee, um, that's the thing. You see, I wouldn't know <laughs> because uh, we haven't been able to play it. Shall I, shall I tell you why we haven't been able to play it? Go on. Uh, because Steam. That's why. Because Steam. You see, you go to buy something on Steam, and mm-hmm. it's it's great. You know, it normally gives you what you want, but what it can do sometimes, it can fuck up. It can take your money, or it can get your money held in a sort of bank limbo and it fails to give you the game that you've just tried to purchase. And that's what's happened. My money is still being held in limbo. I'm going to have to talk to my bank about it to say, look, it's been sat there for fucking two weeks doing nothing. Can I have my money back, please? I know this is turning into an IT support thing, but have you just set up a new Steam account for her? Or is this your no, Steam this is, account? No, this is one that she's had. I tried buying it as a gift for her, and it didn't work. And we tried going on to actually her account and buying it straight off. Still didn't work. So there must have been some sort of problem at the time. Cause, but, um, okay. yeah, this is using two different machines as well to no. do the job. Okay, because the only thing I was going to say is normally, normally what happens is if you put a new card on a new account, it has to yeah. do that um, same thing as um, eBay does, where it puts one penny, it takes one penny out of the account, puts one penny back in the account, and it does it needs a verification email. Right. And if yeah, you haven't they're... done that, then it basically says, yeah, until I know this card actually works, fuck you. Yeah. I and think if it's... it tried to do something like that. It tried to contact me, bank, so that little page comes up where you say, yes, it is definitely me, but it never appeared, so... Mm. Yeah. And the other and the other thing is also if the card is linked to her and she's fifteen, there are some no. things I was going to say. Th- there's this some... was my card we tried to use to buy the. Oh the well, then there. it's got no yeah. money in it. That's what that is. Oh <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> that's why that's not working. <laughs> fuck you! You, <laughs> you can't you can't buy you can't buy video games with magic beans. What? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> What, what is it you're trying to say? <laughs> pocket pocket lint and wishes is not an not, not a viable. It's got me by. It's got me by quite fine, thank you. Up until this point, piece so, of paper um, saying I'll pay you back on this gov ain't really the ain't the, really the sort of like internet currency these days. I don't fucking believe you. So there you go. <laughs> All right, fine, whatever. You you have your little. You have your little fantasies like that. Yeah, okay, fine. You go off over there. Talk about your global warming. Go on. Yeah, I don't believe you for a minute. <laughs> cryptocurrency. What you yeah, mean? Your cryptocurrency. <laughs> what you mean, like pound sterling? Yeah, yeah. that, that, that shit. Your crypto, the super dog, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> that. Anyway, moving on from mm. that. A um, mm. couple of things I watched in the last uh, few mm. weeks. One of them was, uh, and I haven't seen the last season of this, but I, I went for and just watched the film. And mm. I'm glad to say I didn't need to actually watch mm. any of the previous seasons to understand it. And that was Luther, the Fallen Son. Mm-hmm. Have you watched it at all, anybody? No. You fucking know. tense. Absolutely <laughs> fucking tense, this thing. Um, mm. Yeah, it's basically Luther gets fitted up for um, for crimes in his past. Um, and he has to go, they basically send him to prison because there's a danger that he's going to catch this guy who's on a sort of like serial killing spree. But he's mm. quite well connected, this bloke. Mm. And um, yeah, yeah, it's played by Andy Serkis, the bad guy. Mm. Um, oh. And uh, it's the sort of bloke you really want to, you wouldn't get tired of punching. You really wouldn't. Mm. <laughs> and I felt that all the way through it. Mm. Um, and there's even one point where somebody says to Luther catch this bloke and calls him pain <laughs> and it's, I'm sitting there thinking please please let that be the end of him <laughs> hitting him until there's a fucking wet sound you know <laughs> but um, mm. yeah I highly recommend it it is it's, it's quite draining because you are <laughs> tense through most yeah. of it because you're like oh you've got to fucking catch him before he does something else Mm. Um, and so, you yeah. sa- and you're saying you never watched any of the other series? No, I watched. I've watched 
uh, was it three or four seasons of Luther, but it's the last season that I didn't watch. What, the one I worked on? Yeah, that one. I think that's why I didn't watch it. Ah, that'll um, explain a lot then. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. So, um, <laughs> Thank you for that. That's all right. No problem. What were you doing on that? Were you painting his bollocks out as well? Or, <laughs> no, or, or, I was paint, actually, I was painting his coat in so he could look manly, manly, manly oh, right. over the city because he was actually bolted to the fucking roof by about 17 cables and four health and safety BBC officers trying to hold him in place in case a gust of wind blew him off the edge. Well, you know what? There's, there is an actual scene exactly like that where he's standing mm. on top of a tower block. Staring out uh, into the sun. Staring out into the sun and yeah. it, for, for no reason yeah. whatsoever. Exactly. You know? And and all you've got to imagine is he's not really wearing a coat below the waist. And so that no. big long <laughs> trench coat is actually a digital coat. And it, there's someone like me painting out thousands of fucking wires and random <laughs> BBC, BBC sort of uh, runners who are holding him down by the feet in case he just decides that enough's enough and throws himself <laughs> off, the bridge, off the building. And he wasn't even wearing any trousers either, was he? No, I know. Yeah. Well, he there wasn't we by the time I was finished. Anyway, oh, there we go. <clears throat> look, well, hey. it, look, it's it, it gets cold and lonely on a Sunday night <laughs> yep. painting out. Well, I've been swimming, and I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so mm. there's that. So that was very good. Um, started watching uh, the show Beef mm-hmm. properly now. So we're halfway through it um, again. Mm. Yeah. It's it's a bit it's a bit like I can hardly describe it. It's a bit like curb your enthusiasm in the way that the people that uh, the 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 main character or the main protagonist or antagonist, whatever mm. sort of like situation they find themselves in, the two main characters, mm. um, everyone else around them is a complete and utter cunt. Mm. I'm not joking. Every, everyone, they everybody they know is a cunt. <laughs> and it's it's like no wonder these characters are frustrated with life mm. right because everyone around them is just a fucking vacuous cunt <laughs> every single one of them nice is apart it... from the, apart from the uh one of the character's daughters who's you know she's not at all she's only she's a little girl who's quite fun mm. but um everyone else Oh my God! You'll see what I mean because you know what it's like with Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, right. I mean, the main character doesn't do himself any favors, but Jesus Christ, it's like I hate his wife in that show. <laughs> I hate his wife. She doesn't do it. She just she just makes situations worse. Yeah, yeah, and it's all the other people that he knows as well are just annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, so yeah. So you recommend it then? <laughs> uh, I do recommend it. <laughs> Because it is, <laughs> right. it's interesting to yeah. watch mm. the uh, uh, the st- the two. I think it's Stephen Young and yeah. um, uh, Ali Wong as well, who yeah. I do like when she does a stand up stuff as well. I've watched quite a few of her shows, mm. and I've really liked her in that. Right. Um, but yeah, the the pair of them, they're really really good in this. Cool. Very very good indeed. And that's um, the one on Netflix, the beef. That is, yeah. It's not the yeah. one that's on Disney Plus, which is the um, the one about the chef. No. The one about the chef. No, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no. I think that's the bear. That oh, that's the bear. That's right. Yeah, I that's right. Yeah, that's the bear. Hmm. But um, cool. No, it's um, yeah. So beef on uh, Netflix. You know, highly mm. recommend that. And uh, one last thing, um, mm-hmm. played. Uh, uh, you know what those those games you get a bit like um yeah, so get those ones that they they stick out there before they're actually finished the early access games they're just called games these days I know <laughs> but they the uh, they send the ones out there with the early access before they're actually completely finished and mm-hmm. they're looking for feedback on them and stuff like mm-hmm. that um I played a new one called Vulcanoids mm. which is how can I describe it it's a bit like Minecraft but steampunk Mm-hmm. Um, set in the 1800s, mm. and what happens is this: that something happens this either There's a volcanic eruption, and these robots appear and mm. take the island over, and everybody has to evacuate, evacuate mm. the island. Um, and you're you go in there to try and set the situation right. And what you've got is, whereas most of these games where you go and you can you know mine the environment and get your resources and stuff like that. Mm. Um, where they're just you running around you've actually got a base 
with mm -hmm. you, you get given a, a mobile base and it's a drilling machine. So it's a bit like Doug McClaw and Pete <laughs> Cushing in Journey to the Centre of the Earth. Yeah. You know? Mm. And so you get to expand the ship as well. You get to add cars to it and uh, mm. machinery and weapons. But when you come up out of the ground, it turns into a, like a stationary base. Mm. And you can just keep adding stuff to it. And, of course, your mission is to try and find out where the fuck these robots have come from. Mm. And it's all based around this like volcano, which erupts every so mm. often. So you have to try and run back to your ship and mm. go underground to avoid being burnt to a crisp or right. get into a building. You, Cause you can enter some buildings and go into the basement and find resources in there. Mm. But um, yeah, quite a tense game in places. Right. Um, quite annoying in others. I think there's right. still a bit of work to be doing with it. But um, I think you can get it at the moment for something like about six or seven quid. Oh, right. And I've already completed it because I've played it quite obsessively. A lot. You know, obsessively. <laughs> right. Um, cool. But yeah, worth a check out, I think. Well, and that's on what? PlayStation, Steam, what? Oh, uh, that's on the PC. That's on Steam. Oh, so look, at, early look at you! Game. Look at you! Part of the PC gamer master race now. Oh, I've gone. <laughs> I've gone back to it now. I don't. In fact, I can't remember when the last time I played my Xbox was. Mm. No, right. all my stuff is now through through the laptop, through the PC. Oh, oh there you go. Look, yeah, PlayStation, Xbox, too, too low low brow for me oh, now. Oh, yeah, you know, this oh. is it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm beyond my, that. Myself and Henry Cavill are looking down on all of you. <laughs> We're judging every single one of you console players now. Yeah. That's it. Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill's PC. He's got he's got a graphics card, and it probably costs more than most of your fucking house. Yep. <laughs> yep. In fact, I've heard that if he sold the graphics card, he could actually get a couple of council estates built. Um, <laughs> yeah, from the he money, could he could probably heat a couple of council estates with I it. Think, I, tell you I think so. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Cool. Well, you know, I think he's visiting Italy at the moment, and well, you know, the weather over there, he's probably got a window open. Yeah, and that's what it was. It was hot, <laughs> hot hair's flowing. <laughs> he was just, yeah, he was playing. He was playing God of War on full full settings and just, yeah, yeah. setting fire to everything. Cool. Indeed. Okie dokie. Um, anything else, sir? No, just that lot. Right, yo. Well, um, my fortnight. Um, I'll start with the not not the um Lord of the Rings style journey, but I'll start with the thing I watched re most recently. Which was something called Sisu. Oh yes, we watched that the weekend. Sisu, <laughs> Sisu. Okay. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I want to see that so bad. Do you know? You know? Okay, Dale. You know when you saw nobody and you yeah. saw nobody and you thought, oh, don't mess with that old geezer. Yeah. yeah. And you thought, oh, that's going to that's going to leave a mark or two, and you were sort of sitting there going, oh. This is going to be painful. Oh, yeah, Sisu. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Sisu's Sisu's a little bit more hardcore than nobody, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> is this John Wick does World War Two? Pretty is that much. It? It's John Wick does World War Two with a Finnish guy, a Finnish special ops guy who's decided to leave the world of war behind. Yeah. And leave the world of Warcraft and behind. Just, no, <laughs> I've quit the game. I've quit the quit. I've quit. I've quit. Too quit. many raids. Too <laughs> many raids. Not enough people. Um, and he's and he's <laughs> and he's decided to go just mine for gold. That's what he's going to do. He's going to spend his dotage just mining for gold with his horse and his dog. That's it. A and, dog. Yeah, oh. he's got a little dog. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Don't kill the dog. Oh, you fucking kill I'm the dog. I'm not saying anything about the dog. Anyway. He digs through and he find he strikes gold in a big way, and then he decides he's got to go back to the nearest town, and you know, sell his gold. The problem is that the Nazis have worked out that they're losing the war and it'll all be over. So what they're doing is they're doing a scorched earth thing throughout yeah. Finland and leaving, burning everything in their path. So he's going one way and the Nazis are going the other. And they cross paths. Ah. And they, the Nazis, working out that they're pretty much doomed and finding out he's got a shitload of gold in a, in his bag, 
decide that they want the gold so they can buy their way out of like Nuremberg trolls that are probably down the road. Right. Uh, and things start to go wonky pretty darn quickly for the Nazis. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Good. That's all I can say, including a novel usage of a landmine, mm-hmm. which is okay. <laughs> which is probably the most unexpected thing you could probably expect a landmine to be doing. (laughs) (laughs) It's all I can say. Um, Also, um, (laughs) well, I can't really say much more than that, but let's just say this. You had me at landmine. (laughs) Let's just just say this. This geezer has about three words in the entire movie, this, this guy, and just the look on his face and the damage he does is more than enough for this film to be worth every penny of the 15 quid I paid Amazon to rent it. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it's, it's in the cinemas, but it's a little hard to yeah. find. And I was I was sitting there and I thought, no, I'm going to watch a film in the cinema, but I don't want to watch this film in the cinema because it's going to have to go up to London and all this kind of crap. So I thought, fuck it. 15 quid for a London ticket, I'll pay 15 quid to rent it. And I watched it and I'll tell you what, there's 15 quid's worth of solid entertainment in that movie, guaranteed. And oh, I will really? be buy I will be buying it on Blu-ray the instant it drops, because <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never seen anything like this. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Jim? I would. Um, I can add to that. It's also by the same director who made Rare Exports. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. In fact, the main guy in it is the dad from Rare Exports. That's right. <laughs> and, one of, and one of the young Nazis is the little kid. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the head na- the head Nazi <laughs> yeah, is the guy good. from the trip. Yeah, you know the weed, you know the weedy <laughs> dude who was who was the bald headed dude, the husband. Oh <laughs> right, yeah. Who's in the Mar- who's also in the Martian? He yeah, yeah he's the head Nazi, and <laughs> oh. uh, I I can't even tell you. It's just no, nope. that's fine. <laughs> you you will see. It's very satisfying. There is so <laughs> much appallingly violent. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievably <laughs> violent <laughs> once it kicks up it takes a little it takes about five to ten minutes to get going but once it gets going it's just you're just sitting there going oh he's not oh he is oh god what's the oh my god <laughs> is that a frisbee oh no <laughs> oh no yeah so sisu satisfyingly violent i think he's could be said <laughs> okay then so definitely if that comes up on on free to view on on one of the one of the streaming services that is going on the docket tip top <laughs> number one right up front guaranteed no problem um and then of course i went off um well i went off to scotland for fortnight doing me driving holiday doing the mm. nc500 and okay. I will I will spare you a lot of the lot of the events because a lot of the events were just kind of driving around, seeing very nice scenery, being in very nice places, watching sun go down. I drove all around the coast of Scotland, uh, drove up and over the Orkneys and around the Orkneys, um, which was fun. And yeah, it was just a lovely, lovely holiday. Hmm. Um, of note, though, in Edinburgh Castle. I went into Edinburgh Castle, which yeah. is where we were to start with, and we were in there, and I noticed that there was a, a picture, and there was something really, really, I don't know what it was, I just looked at it and thought, I recognise those eyes, I recognise that nose, and I recognise that chin. And then I went up to it, and I noticed that there was a Scottish general who was called, no joke ladies and gentlemen, Boulders Barnard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Granddad. General. Grand, grandpapa. General. Great grandpapa. General Boulders Barnard. Yep. <laughs> which, which, which immediately made me think, oh my God, I can't get away from him even if I'm 500 fucking miles away. That so, was my pawn name, by the way. Boulders <laughs> Barnard. <Yes. Indeed. laughs> he would manifest 500 miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, so it was like a weird picture of Dorian Gray. It was very bizarre. Um, Look, we we know Darren's everywhere. Yeah, there's a content yeah. called Darren on Scarrow. This is a fact. <laughs> is there? <laughs> Darren on Scarrow. That sounds like a travel blog. 
<laughs> it's like dancing on ice. Darren on Scarrow. And we also or, know that you... Or you... is that a drug, Darren on Scarrow? <laughs> 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 Tip top A1 clubbing jam. I Bang. am the beast king. <laughs> <laughs> I am the mushroom king. I only eat what I kill. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, so there was that um another thing we did was we went to inverness and we got on a on a speedboat to go look at dolphins and various sea creatures now mm-hmm. I, i'll tell you this right first things first get on a speedboat you think Oh, you got visions of you know Don Johnson. You got oh, yeah. Magnum. All these kind of skipping across the water, kind of like super yeah. fast. You got wind in your hair. You know, sort of music's playing. Da 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 da. Yeah. What it happens in reality though is you sit on this boat, and they put you in this wetsuit that makes you look like like the world's campus astronaut, and then they go. Right, we're going to have to go pretty fast and get to different places pretty quickly so that we can get close to the to the pods of dolphins. But we can't go into certain areas, so we've got to sort of skip around and see what we can see. This this boat, called the Mischief, had two 250 brake horsepower engines or some nonsense. So uh, stealthy then? No, it was very, very loud. But it's like it's kind of chugging along in the in the harbour, and then all of a sudden it's like dolphin spotted, and this thing literally went about six feet up in the air. My lips, the wind hit me so hard, my lips literally folded over the back of my head. I was, <laughs> I look, I looked like Louis Armstrong in reverse. I was kind of like all my lips were up in the air. I was kind of like being blown as opposed to blowing the trumpet. I was going, and the cars, the things going. I'm like, I can't hear myself. I can't breathe. The wind's going at me at a fucking 100 mile an hour. And then you kind of calm down and you go, dolphin. You see a little fin go up and over in the distance. You go, oh, that's great. Once my eyelids have flapped back into place, I'll be able to see what I'm looking at. Once the moisture has returned to my eyeballs. (laughs) Once the moisture has returned to my eyes. Yeah. So there was that zipping all over the place. Um, and we went to a few other places. We went to, we went to a lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. and Did we you s- like the lobster? I <laughs> liked the lobster. lobster. I found a wanking shed. Good, good. excellent. <laughs> did you get the, did you have a sex mermaid? I no? did not. Well, you know, mm. maybe, maybe, you know, not keep, let's not put that on the podcast. Anyway. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> anyway, and um, yeah, so so went and stayed in the lighthouse. That was lovely because we were right up in the sort of north, sort of west point sort of way. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then there was a place called Cape Wrath, and there was there was we went to John O'Groats, right? Now yeah. here's a thing: when you think John O'Groats, <laughs> you think that's the most northerly point in the in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, well, apparently so. Yeah, and the main lands into John O'Groats. What yeah. a load of old bollocks! Oh, what right. a complete <laughs> and utter load of old tip-top A one fucking tourist baiting old shite. We've been sold a lie. <laughs> it what? sits. It's sitting right in the middle of. It's sitting. I right don't know what to believe anymore now. Oh. I mean. <clears throat> If yeah, if you want if you want to go and stand by a pole that says you know New York this way, Paris this way, fucking you know Cornwall that way, it's like oh right, and there's a little arch that says that says John O'Groats to Land's End, you know sort of walking walking destination, start and finish, and you're like oh, so it's just like a little promotional thing where you walk through it to say that you've started your walk down to to Land's End. But if you want to go to the topmost, northernmost, north easterly point in Scotland, you've got to go off to somewhere called Dun- uh, the oh, was it Dun- Dunness, which is uh, you know about ten minutes up the road, and mm-hmm. way, way as far as you can go. I mean, you're literally standing on the edge of this thing. There's a lighthouse, another one. Hold on, there we go. Ah! Another fucking lighthouse. And it's like right on the pinnacle of f- 
fucking northeast, northeast of the United Kingdom mainland, and that is like then you know you're far away. It's like landscapes from something from Star Wars. There's like craggy teeth of shit coming out of the ground. <laughs> you know, there's puffins, you know, everywhere. And you're like, oh my God, if if I was to fall off this cliff, there'd be no one for miles around to come and rescue me. I would die. I would literally die out here. Whereas you go to John O'Groats, it's like fucking Croydon. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> Croydon on sea. Croydon yeah. on sea. Yeah, it's just like I mean, I got, I got. We all That's got very there. Funny if you've eaten in Croydon as well. <laughs> yeah, it's Was like there an actual <laughs> sign that said that John O'Groats twinned with Croydon. It, no? Do you know what? It wouldn't have surprised me. But you're just standing there going, "What the fuck is this? It's a car park with a bunch of like tea shops and loads of stuff selling t-shirts and oh, I'm mm-hmm. Binton John O'Groats, and it's like." And yeah, all I but, got was this lousy t shirt. Yeah. It's just like it's it I tell you what, it's like it's like going on holiday to Morocco and then and mm-hmm. someone saying and someone saying, Oh, do you know you're on the equator? It's like What? No I'm not. I'm in Africa. Yeah, but it's near the equator. Mm-hmm. I mean it's like going to Greenwich. Oh, you're on the meridian, the mean the mean line. Okay. Right. And and that's exactly how I felt with John O'Groats. I got there, I was just like, yeah, we're here. Oh, look, look at the view of the car park. Look at yep. the view of the tea shop. Look at yep. the tiny view of the water. And look at off to your, look off to your fucking right and see somewhere further north. Yep, and see that massive TK Maxx that they've just built there. And there's a Primark <laughs> over there and a McDonald's. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and so, a KFC. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, oh, come off it. Come off it, really, seriously. <laughs> Just, just what a load of old shit. Um, <laughs> pound shop, <laughs> pound uh, shop, exactly, <laughs> exactly. JD Sports. Yeah, anyway, there's an Audi uh, over there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at the little. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's just it's one Morris. <laughs> it's just Morrison's with a fucking sign on it. Um, yeah, there's a Costa uh, yeah. over there. <laughs> it <laughs> weren't far off. Costa. It weren't far off. And but but anyway, but the other thing we did. Um, and then I'll leave the Scotland thing behind because otherwise I'll go on for too long about it. Was we went <laughs> right? We went went up this play, went up this kind of trail that was kind of like, oh, you got to follow the five hundred, and you're following the five hundred, and it gets to a point where it splits, right? And it's still the fire, it still counts as the five hundred, but then there's a sign that says no camper vans. It's like just no camper vans. If you've got a camper van or a long wheelbase yeah. vehicle, do not go on this road. It's like right, okay. Okay, Carol goes. Oh, you know, well, you know, we've got a car to do it. You know, I've got this fucking Jeep thing that was like, I mean, it was like kit, right? This thing, this thing had literally <laughs> only done a thousand miles. It was brand spanky new, and it's got all sorts of things like it reads the signs. As you drive past them, so as you drive past, and it goes, and it says like twenty miles. You mi- are going to have a wonderful day today. <laughs> yes, I'm reading the runes. No, <laughs> I know, and it, but it does things like it reads the white lines, and so if your car oh. kind of goes too close to a white line, and I'm not Vision talking about dreams of passion. passion. Oh, yeah. yeah, going through <laughs> my mind. Yeah, and every night I think of you. Um. <laughs> It basically it starts to go. Oh, you're getting too close to the white lines in the middle of the road, and it goes. Doo, 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 doo. And if you go too far to the white lines, it starts steering you back. So you're fighting the what? fucking. You're fighting the steering because the thing's reading the white lines and going. You're too close to the middle of the road, mate. And it's like, <laughs> fuck you, car. I'll drive how I want to drive. Did you manage to find the option to switch that I shit off? Bloody well did. And Good. And then, and then it's got, and it's got a sonar around it. So there's like, like a Star Trek style sort of view of the top of the car, and you can see all around yourself like a alarm! radar. Alarm! <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like ping, 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 incoming. Praise for impact. <coughs> Fucking Dustin co- Ida Dev charge. One ping. Oh, but shilly. <laughs> and oh, yeah. we will listen to their Scottish music. <laughs> we will eat their haggis and chips. <laughs> we will listen to their rock and roll. <laughs> well, you actually you can't because you can't get any fucking signal when you're out in the kingdoms. But anyway, 
So but we go there's to a Primark. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a Primark at fucking. But no signal. <laughs> no That's signal. A, then it is like Croydon. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so the car was kind of constantly scanning everything. And when it saw signs on the road, like um, when the lights are blinking. What are you doing, Lee? It was. What? But it's like even signs like if it's do, it says if the lights are blinking, school is active 20 miles an hour maximum. Right. And but it wouldn't read the words, but it see the sign saying 20 mile an hour maximum. So as soon as you go past this thing, it reads the 20 mile an hour sign and puts it on your dashboard going 20 miles an hour. You're going too fast. You're going too fast. And like, uh, you're like, you what? And the fucking thing's fighting to keep you in the middle of the cocking road. And you're trying to, and it's all came to a head when we went to this bit where it says, do not go. If you've got a wild wide wheelbase. Right, right, and I'm like, right. Well, I've got this big, I've got, yeah, buttery base, buttery biscuit base. Anyway, so I've got this big four b four fucking super technology Terminator on wheels. It reads everything, it does everything, and we go on this thing, and this pass. No joking, it was spectacular. It really was. It was like that sort of a cross between Top Gear and the bit when they land in Prometheus. You know, where it's all big mountains and fucking yeah. clouds everywhere. And I'm like, wow, this is pure Lord of the Rings madness. This, these built, these cliffs are like thousands of feet tall. And we're going along, and then the road starts to go up. And then it does a 180 and turns directly back on myself. And I'm like, this car's a bit wide for that turning. I'm not entirely sure I can turn that far or that fast or get my car around it at all. What's over the edge? Oh, it appears to be a 500-foot drop straight Smash down. It. And I I tell you what, if you'd put a piece of coal up my ass, you would have been, I would have been <laughs> shitting diamonds by the time I got to the top of this thing. Apple Cross, Beautiful. it was called. It was called the yep. Apple Cross. And is that what you call that manoeuvre that your body pulled? Is that what it's forever going to be known <laughs> the, as? Yeah, now? the apple cross. I went, I went totally apple cross. I yes. went totally apple cross. But worse than that was, so there I am trying to go up and down these, these very narrow roads, but they can only take one car at a time. So anyone coming down the hill while I'm going up the hill... Is fucked. Well, no, we had to find places. There's like little places you can sort of pull over but you've you've literally got to pull right into the corners so you pull into the corner and now all of a sudden super fucking clever Haw- Stephen Hawking the Terminator car is going ping 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 you're too close to the corners <laughs> ping 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 look out for the white lines ping 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 oh there's a car in front of you it's like I fucking no <laughs> ping ping I'm going to steer this for you it'll be really helpful you steer me we're going to die it's just like fucking insane. So I mean, that was when I lost my shit and turned the whole lot off. And drive it like a man was meant to do. And then I shat myself because the car wasn't turning fast enough. <laughs> I wasn't doing all the power steering and shit. I was like, oh, God, I'm going to die. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, you know, Katie's got control of the... Uh, got control of the sound system and so there's there is taylor swift giving me the uh we are never <laughs> ever ever getting back together as i'm climbing on a one on a 25 degree hill so it didn't go <laughs> we're going to die as it, it didn't change and go hey it's you you're the problem it's you yeah no no not quite but it should have done so yeah. uh yeah but we got to the very top and it was like oh thank fuck but yeah there was a couple of really properly hairy moments there it's like yeah, we're not coming back from this. If I go more than five miles an hour, we are all going to die. <laughs> so, yeah. But the view at the top was nice. <laughs> so you, you didn't have that moment when, hello, lads, I've got an idea. Do you know what? That's sometimes how I felt. It really did feel like that a couple of times. It was yeah, like... You got stuck on the edge and... Yeah. It as was, the gold slipped one way. And, <laughs> well, it was you know. it was the fact that the car the car was so wide and so high on its on its wheels and we've only ever had a little poxy little fold yeah. so so like we're down there we're, we're used to sort of driving like quite low to the ground and this thing's like you're six feet up in the air you don't you don't even you don't even have to sort of sit down in the car you just sort of open the door and just step in and oh, okay. and it was just like fuck me it was stressful and then i did all that driving got to the hotel at the end of it which was in a place called uh glenock I think it was Glen Glenock, Glen Glenog, 
Glenn Clay. Anyway, it began with Glenn and ended in Ock. And mm. we got to this hotel, and then I sat down. I'm like all sweat, all like you know, fingers like kind of like John Candy in uh, plane trains and automobiles, <laughs> pulling them out of the fucking dashboard. Yeah, and um, got there, sat down. I thought, ah, oh, just a little bit of telly, just to calm down before we go to the bar and have a drink. Turn on the telly, fucking Islander. On no ice. <laughs> feel like, the stag. Feel the stag. Be with one with the stag cloud. Let it flow through you. And it's like, oh, fuck off. Um, and lastly, <laughs> I'll finish. I won't do any more Scotland stuff, I promise. But the last thing was yesterday was Kate, uh, it was Lisa's birthday. And oh, happy birthday. Yeah, she's 16 now. So basically, cut a long story very short. One, of the, she's she's got some very in, sort of things that she wanted to do before, you know, just like sort of mad little things that she's always wanted to do since she was young. And one, and we just picked them out and just let her do them. And one of the things was she wanted to go on a bloody, you know, tour bus round okay. London. It's like okay, fine, Is that what you want to do. You want to do that's what you want to do. Cool. So we get on a tour bus now. Ever since then, I've really doubted what. Since to since yesterday, I have had my world shaken by precisely what tour buses in other countries are telling you. Okay. Because we went on this tour bus, and you know, been around London enough times, I know what everything is. We just wanted to go on a tour bus that took you to all the different sites, and we're sitting there. And I thought, put the headphones in. And we're putting the headphones in, and as we're going through like a a, a four mile underpass, it goes. On your left is the Tate Modern. And it's like, what? You you what? The Tate Modern? I can't even see the fucking sky, let alone the Tate Modern. I can't even see the Thames. What the fucking... What? And it gave you all these bullshit st- stories about stuff. And you're just thinking, hold on, this is like this is like a travelling version of the Hungarian phrasebook joke from fucking Monty Python. It was just so much stuff that they were just talking. It was just absolute bollocks. <laughs> but... More than that, they had something which was just really, really weird. There's two there's two voiceovers that do this speech uh, as you go to different landmarks. One of them was this guy, and he, every time he kept talking about his godson. So he said, oh, and over to your left, you'll see Camden Market. Camden Market is full of stalls and everything. As it turned out, we were in, we were in Aldwych. We were nowhere near Camden Market, but uh, it told right. us anyway. Yeah, Camden Market. And it goes, you know, it goes, oh, you know, Camden Market. My, I took my godson there once, and he ate a donut, but he dropped the donut and started crying, so we had to leave. Oh, and that's uh, the that's the entire that's the entire breakdown right. of Camden Market. Thanks very much indeed. That's it. Thanks very much. But the lady, there was a lady who kept jumping in every now and again, and as we went past the Tate the second time, on the other side of the river, it turns out. She goes, she goes, little is no, yeah, you know, apart from the Tate Modern is an amazing building. But what you might not know is there's a tunnel that was loaned to artists by by the, the borough of Lon- uh, the London Council. And I remember my ex boyfriend took me there and it, it took, no, took me up the graffiti tunnel. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He went, she goes, took, my ex took me up the graffiti tunnel. She goes, she goes, I, pre- you know, I knew this was the town of Jack the Ripper, <laughs> but I pretended to be scared. So he swept me up in the in, in his arms, and it was so romantic as we he continued to take me up the graffiti tunnel. And it's like, are you Warm listening like to yourself? Girl. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, do what? And then later on, as we carry on round, there's various different points, and then she gets to another one, and she goes, "This is the Tower of London. The Tower of London you know, has a has a legend, which is." Ravens, if they were ever to leave, would bring bad luck. So, you know what we do? We keep a couple of ravens in captivity, and we even clip their wings so they can't leave. And then she goes, I wonder if you can do that with some men. You're like, what? Okay. <laughs> and then finally, we go past Horse Guards Parade, and we go past the barracks where they all, where they all stay. And she goes, this is the Horse Guards Parade. This is where the um, Queen's Guards stay. So, by the way, they are talking about the Queen, you know, who's been dead for you know probably about twelve months. Yeah, 
So he, there's no update been done then. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no, there's a point there's a point where they, they the guy turns around and says, Oh, you might have to watch out because there may be um protests about the incoming Brexit vote. But um What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. And then um <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then she goes she goes, The thing is with men in uniform, when they stand outside Horse Guards Parade, they have to stay stock still. I often wonder how much steam they have to let off in those barracks because they can't move for very long in outside, so they must want to roughhouse and get get all actiony and steamy. And this is like, calm down, love. Are you, are you all right? You what? And do you want to get amongst it? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> would, you, would you like us to leave? And give yeah. me some give me some space. Well, know? even the girls started calling her Thirsty Annie. It was just like, what the fucking hell is this all about? So yeah, so if you want to laugh, if you want to hear someone someone going through some sexual frustration thing, um, yeah. go on toot buses, um, <laughs> from from Piccadilly Circus, and and just 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 go round go round, and they'll tell you Camden is in Aldwych. And tell you that the Tate Modern is a, a underpass on the north side of the river, oh, and okay. and this woman's s- sort of sexual whimsies. It's very bizarre, very very bizarre. But so it was it falls a, is where the Queen keeps her bees. <laughs> <laughs> St Paul's was built. Was St Paul's was built for the cabaret act of Paul Daniels. Um. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there you go. Anyway, um, the other thing we went to see, we will rock you. Um, oh right, okay. Which, is, which which was had been updated, and and now we have a narrator in the form of Ben Elton, actually on stage, um, and in many cases helping sing, which is yeah. which you know I'll, I'll give Ben his due. He can write and he can do yeah. jokes, and he's got a good sense of timing. But singing "Days of Our Lives" is not. Oh God! Really, not really something you want to be hearing. Well, he sings all like this. These are the days of our lives. The bad things in life are oh, so few. You're like, <laughs> do you what? Am I having a stroke? Am I really watching Ben Elton in a hippie wig singing, s- sort of monologuing "Days of Our Lives" by, <laughs> by Queen? Apparently so. Apparently so. So yeah, so there you go. But it was fun. It was fun, and you know, everyone everyone got into it. But um, yeah, that that I will leave it there because I'm very aware I'm waffling on, and I did a lot over those two weeks. But anyway, I might give you some more stories from Scotland if if I have a quiet week. Anyway, right, let's leave it there. Um, let's do some quickly feedback. Um, what we did um arrival last time. Um, not a lot of feedback about Arrival, to be honest, except for Chris Johnson, because I think we mentioned um, getting hit in the face with the emotional pork chop, at which point, uh, which was a phrase I can't even remember, but I'm I'm assured it happened. And Chris Johnson (laughs) went and put emotional pork chop into chat GPT. The vision is something else to behold. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's definitely worrying. Emotional pork, pork chop. It's on the Facebook group. Do go and have a look. Facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast. If you look under the episode of Black Dog Podcast Arrival, you can see it. It's it's definitely a thing. Emotional pork chop. Um, the one bit of feedback we did get, though, was from uh, Jeffrey Mark Hyman, who said, Arrival is the kind of grown-up, thoughtful sci-fi that we need a lot more of. Thanks for covering it. The discussion brought up so many excellent points I hadn't considered and further cemented my appreciation for this masterpiece. There you go. Mm, cool. So, cool. Good. There you go. See, we actually apparently said something actually insightful. Maybe even profound. Profound, maybe. You never know. Who can say? <laughs> Who can <laughs> tell? <laughs> many things have been said in time. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um... Hold on, hold on. Where is it? This, yeah. Oh, Sean Gleason said it's a good time to watch this one. I felt I need it needs a rewatch, and uh, and then Andy Palastides and Martin Thompson um, link to the Great Derelict episode of Arrival, which I did with Andy. Um, the and they link it to it twice because what happened was um, for some reason Facebook got hold of links and just went, no, it's spam. 
And it's like, oh. do what? Fucking yeah. spam? So, um, yeah. So, yeah, go over to greatderelict.libsyn.com slash arrival uh, if you want to hear me whiffling on about arrival some more. It's there. But anyway, so, um, yes, that's it. That's our feedback. If anyone has any feedback for any other episodes, this episode or any others, um, do send it in to feedback at blackdogpodcast.com or jump on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast. Um, and I, I was going to say we're on threads, but we're not. I was going to say we're on <laughs> Mastodon, but we're not. I was going to say we're on Twitter. We're not on that either, nor Instagram. So, um, don't know why I mentioned it, really. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's that. So, um, yeah, I think we can leave it there. And I think we shall roll the jingle for the day the earth caught fire. Hold on. Press that button. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you fire. Well, you're certainly doing your job today, Mr. Sun. Oh, rats. Right. So, The Day the Earth Caught Fire is a British science fiction disaster film starring Edward Judd, Leo McKern, Janet Munro, and was directed by Val Guest and released in 1961 and is considered one of the classic apocalyptic films of the era. The film opened in the Odeon Marble Arch on London, in London on the 23rd of November 1961. Um, there is not a lot of information about the production of it in terms of budget and how much it made this box office. But anyway, but the film uh, talks about um, a couple of Daily Express uh, journalists who investigate why the Earth is suddenly mysteriously having a lot of weather problems and getting hotter. <laughs> is it related to some ecological disaster or those two bombs that went off on totally different parts <laughs> of the Earth <laughs> and rang the whole thing like a bell? Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. And watch and thrill as they, as they decide, as they figure all this out, walking around Battersea Park <laughs> and the pub. Right. <laughs> anyway, so... That's that. Um, it did have a budget of nine hundred, one hundred ninety thousand quid. Um, it doesn't tell us how much it made at the box office. Um, I don't. Yeah. Oh, the film made a profit. Oh, it did make a profit. Here I go. So go on in. It made a hundred. It was made for one hundred ninety thousand quid. How much did it make at the box office, Elton? Um, a copy of the press release. But this one is smudged. Okay, nice. I'm liking that. <laughs> uh, Darren, niche. That's that's a niche. That's version. niche. Yeah. Yep, that's very niche. Um, I think it made some sweaty people and Leo McKern's entire um, whiskey uh, stash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Jim. Um, three buckets and two and a half hours queuing for the standpipe. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it doesn't have an actual value total, but it did. The, but the box office, uh, you can do some rough maths in your head. The box office in 1973, bearing in mind it was released in 1961, but the total profit box office was 22,500 quid. Woo! Take Which, that, Avengers. Yeah, <laughs> which means I think it made roughly sort of 212,000 quid um, of a budget of 190,000, but it took until 1973 to do it. <laughs> slow burn. Slow burn. <laughs> definitely, definitely the definition of a slow burn. So They're waiting it, for the DVD release, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> In 1973, yeah, yeah. While sitting, in the, while sitting in your um, vintage cars, listening to NWA by um, <laughs> NWA and uh, George Formby, mm. straight out Trumpton. <laughs> 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 I 
I nearly said George Foreman. The George Foreman fat grill. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> I've, got, I've got an image of my head of fucking Windy Miller with an Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> Bonk. Tough bitch. <laughs> tough bitch motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Uzi, Stranger lover. Trumpton. Crazy Miller called Windy. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, um, yes. So, it took a while. It did take a while to get some money. Anyway. Um... <sighs> let's go. It's it, I do, the only other thing that's probably worth noting is that even though it made that money and it made it over <laughs> like what appears to be twelve years, um, the film kind of vanished for a while, and it wasn't until the BFI restored a print um, about five ten years ago that it actually sort of returned to the world, so to speak. It kind of vanished apparently, but um, anyway. We will get to more of this and talking about the film itself, but let's go around the table, find out what everyone thought of it. Jim's obviously going to go last because it was his pick. So we'll start with you, Elton. What did you think about The Day the Earth Caught Fire? I quite enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to watch it twice, though. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I did because it it kind of... Well, I, I watched it once accidentally thinking that we may be recording last week. And then send you guys a message saying, oh, we do, we're not doing it this week because I saw you still in Scotland. I was like, no, mm. it's not going to happen this week, is it? No. That's right, yeah. We've got a week off. So mm. I, I had to watch it again for a refresher anyway. But I'm glad I did because, yeah, it, it did refresh and it, it did kind of – I like the way the top and tail kind of mm. work together and tie in with each other. It's, it's very cool. Mm. Um, I, I think it, it suffers from pacing mm. in the fact that it's frantic all the way through. It's like the whole film is on t uh, times two speed mm. and there is not a single full stop in any of these sentences whatsoever <laughs> throughout the whole <coughs> flipping movie. Mm. Not one. <laughs> Everybody's going to talk looking like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's not a breath taken or anything like that. No full <laughs> stops, no commas, no nothing, <laughs> no punctuation whatsoever. Mm. But apart from that, I I really enjoyed it. Cool, okie dokie. And Darren, what about you? You're you're our king of post-apocalyptic type movies. What did you oh, think of it? Yeah, um, that and old sci-fi films, black and white ones. Mm -hmm. I particularly love them just because of the the sort of innocence that mm. they have, you mm. know, that they've still got like Miles Chumley Waters here. Yeah. Hey, the Cockney type of things going on. Mm. British sci-fi, black and white movies especially. Trust the science. Um, yeah, trust the science. <laughs> oh, look over there, Mom. There's a man coming out of the forest with funny eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got to find, I'm, I'm on the lookout for a film with that kind of stuff in it. You yeah, know, a, an old British black and white sci-fi movie with somebody coming out the forest with funny eyes yeah. and the theremin playing. Yeah. Get a bit of theremin music going. Ooh, I mean, oh, Man yeah. from Planet X would fit the bill for that, I think. Yeah, oh, excellent. Or Devil or, Girl from Mars. Or maybe <laughs> yeah. a maybe a Quatermass <laughs> film. <laughs> Professor Quatermass, what is going on here? Well, we've been yeah. fucking invaded. What did you think is going on here? Yeah. It's an alien, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but I I, I really enjoy this film. Just because mm. of that. I mean, there is some there is some questionable stuff in it, mm. you know, certain attitudes. Um, you said mm. again, ooh, ah, mm. especially um, you know, a hero, Rapey McRapey. Um, Rapey McGrapeface. Yeah, who might as well have turned to the woman at one point and gone, Well, it's not gonna suck itself, love. And it's like because <laughs> that's what it, you it's like I'm sitting there watching it. It's like you are literally Kicking the door in and going in there and just like, well, let's get at it. Yeah. Look, so, I had to walk up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love, what's that all about? I'm just here for sex. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So um, apart from his attitude and his constant trying to uh, sort of like, you know, one-upmanship in the joke stake with uh, Liam McKern, mm. um, because every line has to be funny. Mm. with this bloke you know everything he says has to have a funny punchy line to it mm. um oh yeah, yeah that got boring really quick 
Oh, it's yeah. like, oh, can you just take it seriously just mm. for a minute? You know, just have a, a moment there, a epiphany on the road to Damascus. You know, mm. just just please once. Mm. But uh, apart from that, oh, I mean, I, I just enjoy the setting of it. It's nice to see, um, you know, uh, a film like this set in familiar territory. I'm mm. trying to, I was looking at like where they were. I could see like, you know, St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, mm. as he's walking down the street at the beginning and at the end mm. um, and just trying to work out exactly where they were in London mm. you know and I'm pretty sure it's either at somewhere like Cannon Street or it's the other end near um, Fleet Street they're probably at yeah they were at the top of Theobald's Road and all no, that kind of thing. but um, yeah I mean I, won- I wonder if I wonder if they got taken up the graffiti tunnel they probably did <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the less successful uh, sequel to Prince's film, Graffiti Bridge. <laughs> um, John, John Craven's Passage. <laughs> <laughs> John Craven's Passage. Yeah. Where we, had, where, we had the sh- where we had the shindig. Oh, yeah. John Craven's Passage. <laughs> yes. John Craven the Hunter's Passage. <laughs> right. I've got so many images in my head now. Um, John Craven in a fucking lion mane <laughs> presenting <laughs> presenting news rounds. John Craven's John Craven's news round is Craven's Craven's last news round. John, John Craven the Craven's hunters. cowardly news, news round. round. Yeah. yeah, John Craven's oh. news round. Ra- final news round. I Craven, didn't realize Cra- we had more wheels to come off of this bus, but uh, <laughs> obviously, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a full it's a full art. <coughs> It's a full Arctic. This 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 car. This, <laughs> this is I tell you, it's going to keep quick fit in business for a while. This one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. but uh, there you go. But uh, yes, so I enjoyed it despite its, um, shall we mm. say, misgivings. Mm. Cool. Okay. Um, for me, I yeah. I mean, you always have to do that thing of it's of its time. You have to take. But there were a couple of moments where I kind of winced. But you you can't. You can't look back at a 1960s movie and go and judge it by 2020 ethics and go, oh yeah, yeah, they they you know they didn't do this, they didn't do that, they should have said this and they should have said that. It's like, yeah. no, it's of its time. You don't necessarily agree with it. That's fine. Understand. Completely get it. And just be happy that we've come a long way. Yes. 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 See it as a marker on the way to progress, <laughs> so, as opposed as opposed to something that should be condemned forever because it did one thing that wasn't quite right by today's standards. Um. Mm. So, but the rest of it, I tell you what, I liked about it. I re- I did really like it, and I th- I found it interesting. But I, I what I found the most interesting about it was the general matter of factness about the whole thing. And I think that was the thing that kind of sold it, sold the premise to me, because the premise is ludicrous. Mm. But and but you still sit there going, this is kind of how I expect it to go. If the world's doomed, everyone's yep. gonna sort of like try and just keep calm and carry on until such time as it they can't keep calm and carry on, and then it all turns to shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, also, it'll be something completely stupid. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. It won't be some end of days final conflict. Mm. It'll be some just minor bullshit no one thought through. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think before the pandemic, that scene where they're throwing water around and having like a water party and shit like that, and I, 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 I think I would have sat there and going, "This is mm. ridiculous. Nobody would do this." But now, mm. no, looking at it. Would. That works perfectly. Mm. That is exactly what people would do. Mm. It is interesting that you you view certain bits of this through a lens of kind of old, silly, old ideas. And other bits you're going, actually, no, we've seen this kind of mental nonsense. And yeah, you know, and scientists saying this, that, and the other, and not believing a fucking word of them. And then when you do believe a word of it, they're all wrong. And you know, the government doesn't tell you everything. You know, it's it's kind of a conspiracy theorist dream in some ways. This film because it kind of reinforces half the stuff that's been going on in the current climate. But anyway, um, but no, before we get into any more discussion about it, and I go off on one, um, I just just know thumbs up, 
took me a while to warm up to it pardon the pun um but yeah it it was yeah i liked it i really did like it um yes jim what about you uh well this was a film i just uh, completely by chance in my t- teens um mm-hmm. bbc2 showed it on some weekday evening mm-hmm. and it's kind of well, i've not heard of this before it's not it wasn't one of the movies I ever saw. I read loads about, like Metropolis or Day of the mm. Earth Stood Still. You know, all those films that always turn up in, yeah. you know, a classic mm. sci-fi movies. And in the kind of all the books we used to have as kids, you know what I mean? It was all about mm. great sci-fi films. It didn't get mm. talked about much. Yeah. Um, and you know, I was completely completely mesmerized by it. Uh, when it found it was on DVD, I bought it, and it was kind of yep that that holds up and some actually. And it's a film yeah. every time I go back to it, I get more out of it. Mm. And actually, I, I think it gets more scary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with each viewing and the older I get, <laughs> mm. um, because it is just uh, very I think on the nose. And yeah. Val Guest, I've seen a few of the Val Guest films. He had this great thing. He always tried to like shoot things almost like documentary. Mm. And that was his big thing. He does it in the Quatermass experiment as well. Yeah. Um, and it is, it's, he just, he's a brilliant, he's still a brilliant, you know, uh, cinematic storyteller and a director. But mm. it's that matter of fact, the way, he, you know, he tries to avoid studio sets and he's like, all the newsrooms, they were the actual newsrooms mm. of the Daily Express building they filmed in. Yeah. And the editor is the editor. <laughs> Yes. playing himself yes <laughs> you know? ironic ironically being the least convincing of all the actors yes. in the entire film <laughs> but i imagine that was the price uh, agreed for him letting them film in there yes yes <laughs> now let's send it up a flagpole and see what sticks <laughs> oh, i want God. you on my desk right now <laughs> i'm going to speak to the manager please <laughs> yeah that, yeah he was one of the worst ones there yeah Anyway, sorry, Jim, carry on. <laughs> but I say, I think it's, um, I think there's a, a, a fright. What's he's frightening is so much truth to it. <laughs> mm. And, yeah. uh, and it's, it was, I think the thing is, it's the way this thing, thing will just, it'll just creep up around the corner. Yeah. I mean, we all dodged a major, major bullet with COVID. Mm. If it'd been another Black Death, it might have been all over very fucking quickly and we wouldn't have seen it coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. Uh, and so it's a film that I think it has, it's tremendously powerful still. Um, and it's mm. kind of, it can out John Wyndham's John Wyndham for that kind of realistic British apocalypse. That's what I was trying to get. That was the mm. br- that was where my brain was going. I knew it was trying to register on something. It was trying to fix on something that I'd seen. And yeah, you're absolutely right. John Wyndham. Mm. He, he was another great. He was a great thing. Well, if this really happened, how would it play out? Mm. You know, whether yeah. it's killer plants or strange pregnancies from outer space or whatever. Mm. Uh, and this is very much in that vein. But I think it it, it does outdo it <laughs> mm. in it, in its in it kind of you know this is how it would be. And uh, so I find it some of it is really ironically quite chilly. Mm. <laughs> it's not pun intended. Mm. But you know what I mean? It is kind of like. Yeah, we're not. It's just not that far away from the collapse of civilization. It wouldn't take much for the house of cards to come down. No, not at all. No, it is. <laughs> it is kind of scary. I mean, okie dokie. Uh, so I think all in all, I think we're all saying to a lesser or greater degree, thumbs up. Yes. Yeah. Oh, mm. I, I should also yeah. say as well, for anyone in the um, shall we say, the warmer regions of America and Europe right now, I'm really fucking sorry. This was a bad taste pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I don't, it turns out, <laughs> I, the problem the problem is with recording any podcast is we have to we have to sort of guess in advance what is going to be bad taste in the past. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just like I don't know. It's, it's just just you can't do anything about it. We weren't trying to take the piss out of people dying in fifty degree heat <laughs> when we chose this film. It was just a bit warm outside. I know. I had a forecast that it would be nice in July. <laughs> yeah. As as it turned out, I spent most of July under a rain cloud, but, you know. So I really didn't get the whole hoo-ha about the thing. I was just sitting there going, where's the sun? Um. Anyway, so, okie dokie. Um, right, well, I guess we're going to talk about spoilers. I mean, I know it's a film that's, you know, nearly 60 
62 years old but you know let's 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 try let's try for a modicum of getting you know a spoiler warning <laughs> if anybody hasn't doesn't know what the film day the earth caught fire might entail and doesn't want to have it spoiled then please just log off now go onto amazon and just just go and watch it because it is oh no not amazon was it, it was on um youtube it was on of YouTube. all places yeah. link on the black dog podcast page exactly a link on the top top header of the page um, but yeah, go go watch it, or go on if you've got BFI streaming service, go on that as well because they've got that as well. It's there, so um, yeah, it's a spoiler. It's spoilers from here on in. So just, just you know, you've only got yourself to blame going forward. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. So let's uh, let's head over to um, Cape Wrath. There you go. Ah, that's the spoiler warning, ladies and gentlemen. So um, you know. Fuck it. There you go. <laughs> so you can't be blamed. You can't be blamed for having it sport now. It's a sixty-two year old film. Jesus Christ, get over it. Um, right, so first off, let's let's just let's just go with the main thing. How did you guys feel? Because I mean, old science fiction does always have this problem of when you're sitting in a more modern time looking back on it and going, silly bastards. They thought two nuclear bombs would throw the Earth off its axis. How did that affect you watching it this time? Hmm. Uh, for me, it doesn't really figure. Not one. Hmm. In recent years, we've seen people drill to the core of the Earth in a little repurposed Star Trek shot hole. <laughs> so uh, I feel in the modern world, which has such cinematic delights as shark eggs exist, we, hmm. have, we have no room to throw stones. <laughs> Very, you know, very yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the don't make a big deal about the science. Mm. Um, it's it's just sketched in and it's, it's a plausible enough thing, but it's not really, mm. it's not it's not one of those science fiction films where scientists are going to have to solve the problem. And mm. so you don't need to go into the science too much. It's just, mm. this is happening to the earth. Is, uh, mm. And we're the poor bastards on the street having to, you know, to deal with it. Mm. <clears throat> what I mean, if it was an American sort mm. of movie, mm. you know, it would be about men in boardrooms sitting and doing last-minute experiments, and blah, blah, blah. it'd be told from the front lines. Mm. The genius yeah. of this movie is it's not from them, so it doesn't matter if the science is wonky because it's kind of it's all out of our control anyway. The mm. scientists might be wrong as why this is happening because of Jesus God they fucked up anyway. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of so it doesn't matter for me in that in that sort of respect. Mm. <clears throat> so you don't have people who are scientists are <laughs> saying things like, Well, mm. you know, we can soon get across this galaxy here and uh, mm. that's part of the Milky Way solar system kind of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Get a piece of paper, folding it, put, <coughs> a pe- put a pen through it. Yeah. You know, that that wormhole thing again. Yeah. Put your helmets on. We'll be reaching speeds of three. You know, none of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. What about you, Dale? What did you find some of that sciencey stuff a bit on the one? Uh, did it bother you at all? Uh, well, I mean, knowing what we know now about like nuclear mm. weapons and stuff mm. like that, the fact that they've been tested and nothing has happened to the orbit of the Earth or anything like this, mm. of course, it's kind of like. Oh bless them! Mm. You know when you 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 listen to that. That's the reason why it happened. Um, yeah. So uh, I I I liked it in a very sort of naive sort of way, right? Mm. So I I really get the innocence of the time when it comes mm. to this. Is all sort of like new stuff that they're thinking of it. Yeah. So I kind of forgave it for that. You mm. know, it's not accurate, but. Um, it's still an idea, isn't it? You know, mm. that's it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. I thought it was fine. Cool. I thought it was just fine. And and you, Elton? Oh, well, I think the science leans into the, the thoughts of the day, where it was all about nuclear war and what were these nuclear mm. war weapons create? What will we get out of them? Are there bad side effects? You know, this could happen. We're not too sure, mm. and so I I quite like it. I I don't mind that they've had an idea of setting off two bombs, and oh my god, they set off two crazy. That's mm. bonkers. 
and and then yeah. the orbit going all it, it really doesn't matter as you said jim we are we are not the scientists this is not uh going to a, a mathematician and then asking him to write it down in chalk on a, mm. on a board in a, a school auditorium and try and work out all these mathematics equations it, it's not that type of a movie this is I, I think there's a couple of threads that they could have, well, were working on. I think it was like the the um, the nuclear war thing or the nuclear weapons mm. and what trouble we can get into with them and what bastards newspaper people are as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Very much so. Yeah, that is an interesting, that is an interesting <laughs> point. Yeah. Um, just something connected to the mm. actual fear that it's you know that uh, the the writers were actually playing on here mm. of nuclear weapons apparently i learned this today i was watching a documentary um apparently oppenheimer when he was going to do the first successful test of the bomb mm. um actually didn't know whether it would destroy the entire planet that's right they thought it might actually ignite the earth yeah the earth's indeed atmosphere. so you can see where the sort of the fear of this sort of thing comes from it being a very unknown technology, you know? Mm. Um, so I can understand why they thought the way they did. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can, I can see where it was coming from. No, yeah. no, it was it, the only reason I was asking was because, you know, sometimes the science, the, you know, the crazy science stuff, you know, the, the, the put your helmet on, we're reaching speeds of three stuff can sometimes be so, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it always makes me laugh that line. I, if I can remember where it comes from, I'll get it. And as a sample, space balls or something like no, that. No, no, no. It's actually it's actually a genuine sci-fi film from the nineteen fifties, and they literally go, "Put your helmets on. We'll be reaching speeds of three. Um, <laughs> and um, anyway, I th or it might even be a mystery science theater or something. But anyway, is it Plan Nine from Outer Space? It oh. might be. I like I say, I can't remember where it comes from, but it always sticks with me. <coughs> and um. The um, the the thing which is really interesting was when I was watching it, you know, you sort of when you first when you first start watching it, you're kind of like, you kind of like, oh, isn't that quaint? Look, look what's happened. Then, because I subscribe to a number of Reddits, and I know Reddit isn't exactly the most authoritative source of news here, there, and everywhere, but on the New Scientist Reddit, which you know you got to give at least a little bit of credence to. Um, apparently, in the last well, in the last hundred and fifty years, we've moved so much groundwater around the Earth from there from its original resting space, which it settled in. Do you know we've actually tilted the Earth by point five of a degree? Really? Really? Yep. Hell. Just by moving that mass. Just by moving <laughs> the mass of water. Mm. Yeah, and you oh. suddenly go, wow. "Hang on." <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. You kind of go, yeah, two nuclear bombs were going off at the same time. Oh, how silly. Silly 1960s people. But now I'm starting to think in 22, 22 23, they're going to be looking back at us going, stupid bastards. They move so much water. They tilted our axis by a fucking half a degree or something stupid like that. And it's just like, and now we're spinning into the sun. Um, mm. But you start to suddenly wonder. It's like it gives you that whole sense of fear of not so much fear of the unknown but fear of dabbling with powers you don't understand which is kind of the fear of the unknown i guess but it's just more a case of you you know the stuff and how it works but you don't know the long-term effects of what that might of the whatever it is that you might do you know we're getting into fusion power nowadays and yeah you know that's just around the corner well what happens if a fusion reactor goes pop Oh, and everyone goes, oh, yeah, well, the power goes off and the magnetism on a tokamak reactor just goes off and the plasma just dissipates. And it's like, <laughs> does it? Are we entirely sure? Because we're spinning, <laughs> we're spinning, at you know, in, we're spinning in a magnetic field, the, the plasma twice the heat of the sun. Are we entirely sure that that's going to just dissipate? Or is it going to dissipate in a massive flash that cooks your burgers on the other side of the planet. You know, I, I think in 61 that they were still 
at the very beginning of mm. these nu- fucking around with nuclear, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like it is today. And we're still at the beginning, really, aren't we? We, we, we have it under control, but, you know, do we really have it under control? You know, mm. we, we, we've got a lot of concrete around these things. Yeah. Just yeah. in case. Just in case. And and some funny looking fish around Fukushima and Exactly, yes. <laughs> and and a and a place somewhere just in sort of north of Ukraine, which let's be honest, nobody wants to go within sort of hundred and fifty miles of and the dogs have got three heads. But you know For the next fifty thousand years. Yeah. But otherwise we're all right. Otherwise yeah. we've got it under control. But um no, so it was just I just found it a really interesting little fact and then I suddenly sort of reappraised how stupid it might be seem to us and then somebody thought well actually hang on <laughs> all they're doing is they're playing on the fears of you know people that you know know just enough to go hang on but anyway i mean mm. you know what it's mm-hmm. it's a bit like the whole thing of um i suppose it, it it doesn't matter how on the nose it is for modern science it's does it play within the rules it sets itself mm you know that the rules for that universe mm. and yeah i think it does uh, mm. especially with what they come out do with the the actual what the cure for the problem is mm. or what they think the cure is is by mm. doing it all over again yeah on you know, the other side of the planet because that'll well, help <laughs> which which i really if i've got to say that part of the movie mm. when it gets to them having to do that mm. i really i really appreciate it how that they finish up mm. with that it's yeah like, yeah that's a perfect finish mm-hmm. yeah. right there just leave it just do that just walk away from it now mm. let's not look at that any further that's good yeah i, was... I like the two ended the two headlines end yeah yeah <laughs> just <laughs> just like, we're saved earth doomed <laughs> yeah yeah the the Bor- the Boris Johnson defense, as it's called, <laughs> exactly, yeah, because he had that, didn't he? He had two columns about like why Brexit failed, why Brexit, why Brexit succeeded, didn't he? For his column, yes, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was going to say with the um with the setting it all in the newsroom, you know, ostensibly a newsroom and a and a park in you know Battersea, mm-hmm. and a pub and a pub in Fleet Street, what? What did you, you know, how did you feel that, did that help it? Did that make it more grounded or did you find it just like kind of felt a bit cheap? I mean, because, you know, some of these, some of these limited set things can be a bit sort of like, oh, you know, a bit obvious. You're saving, saving, you know. Oh, I love all that stuff. Yeah. I love, I I love the cheap stuff. Yeah. I think it's great. uh, As you say, it, it just really does add something to it that, um, I don't know. There's there's something about when you see an American Hollywood production of something like this. Mm. There's always that level of insincerity mm. about the whole thing. Like you know that it's mm. there's too many people acting. Mm. You know, and it's I don't know. There's something so down to earth about it being a British point of view. Mm. You know, there's no theatrics. There's no people getting really over emotional or anything like this. It's just this is the way we are, you know. <clears throat> and it's it's very it's a very accurate portrayal, I think. Hmm. Well, I think that coming about the, the the sets and the locations is kind of you're just really in Stenning's world, mm. and it is kind of these are the places he goes to. He goes to them every day, and that's that. It's not like kind of so many other movies, even British movies, where like characters in London, I'm on my way to work. I go past the London Eye. I'm having my lunch in front of Nelson's Column. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of, I'm going to go shopping. I'm in Piccadilly Circus and then Camden Market. And yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, are you making a film on the fucking tourist trail? Come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it completely avoids, you know, that, that kind of showy picture <coughs> postcard tour of the, the sites of London sort of side. Yeah. And you get to see kind of a bit of the real London. I, mean, mm. I, re- I really love yeah. that in old movies, seeing kind of, you know, especially places you, you recognise and you've been to as well and see how different it is. 
Yeah. Uh, unlike certain Marvel movies where you can uh, get on a train at somewhere like Charing Cross and end up uh, outside the Seamen's Hospital in Greenwich. <laughs> <laughs> looking at you, Thor Dark World. I'm looking well, at you. Well, funny enough, or the other one I always go back yes. to, which is Clear and Prison. No, was it Patriot Games? I think with, it was. Where Harrison yeah. Ford's outside the Naval College and he waves to his wife, Gates McFadden, who's standing outside <laughs> of um, Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> As as ter- as terrorists drive between them down cl- down down Clark and Well Road, it's like do you that's fucking a strong what? wave, isn't it? That is it that's is. that's a strong wave, but it's also very good, very good, <laughs> um, very good uh, IRA terrorists who can drive in a black cab in balaclavas from Camden, Ma- no, from Co- from Clark and Well Road, which let's be honest, is like north of the river, and it's on the east side of the of London. To the west end of London, where fucking was it? The Queen is, where Buckingham Palace is, mm-hmm. and on the north side of the river, and then pull up in between them and Harrison Ford, who's on the south side of the river and on the complete opposite side of London. It's just like <laughs> that's a fucking win. That is, and Sean Bean's in it as well, isn't he? Yep, he yeah. was. Yep, yep, yep. And um, and and Brad Pitt with his his Irish accent. <laughs> yes. But he wasn't eating, so that's probably why he failed. Um, oh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the 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 grit of it, the the idea that you know, yeah, oh, we are in London. It feels really. It did feel real. That whole thing of limiting the the the, the position. Yeah, limiting Some of the it sets. Did, did it? Some, well, well, okay. Well, when yeah. I was younger, and I, I'm pro- sure I've mentioned this before, but we. Uh, yeah, when I was really, really young, uh, living at my parents' house, we used to watch uh, the old Sherlock Holmes black and white movies mm. or the the TV show. That's a ref, though. Mm. Yes, I don't know who. Come was on, Watson. It. But we loved them. But there mm. was an effect. They had like the back projection. Oh yes, yeah. Mm. Where it looks terrible, and so the people don't move, but all the stuff around it moves, like that bit in airplane where the man go, he runs over the bloke on the bike, and he, yeah, the bike gets thrown <laughs> over, and then you see the man shaking his fists in the rear projection. Yeah, and we always used to call that Sherlock's. If we saw that <laughs> that effect, we'd shout Sherlock's at the TV. Rex <laughs> Rex Kramer being chased and chased by was it a bunch of Indians from Stagecoach as well That's at one it, point, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and whenever I see it now, I shout Sherlock's, and I I shouted it so many times in this. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. When they were on the um in the fairgrounds having their little uh, discussion. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, no, I'm talking about. I I was. I mean, I get that. I mean, you know, the whole sort I love of like that. I I. I I think it dates it, but it also that adds a little homely thing for me. It just adds another little thing that I I appreciate from my childhood, which brings it back into this. And so, mm. yeah, it, it makes me warm to the movie even more. Mm. No, cool. But I mean, the, the actual locations. I, I suppose, like, yeah, you have the pub where it's it is the office, mm. but it's a different place of the office. Mm. It's a different setting. It's mm. a bit of a different type of pub as well because it's it's basically like someone's house because you can see right through to the kitchen at the back <laughs> they've got like a sandwich <laughs> toaster. Don't worry, I'll I'll stick on a I'll stick mm. on a steak for you. I'll have it done in ten minutes. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it'll be done in fucking a further ten minutes when he dies of botulism. <laughs> um, that's that's if the alcohol doesn't kill him off. I mean, uh, or BSC, you know, when mm. I, I know it wasn't invented back then apparently. BSE wasn't invented. Yeah, it wasn't invented back then. Um, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know where I go. I don't know where I'm going with that. It's like Jesus. Okay. Um. Oh, yes. Dear. Um. Okay, can, well, can I ask something else? What did Stenning actually do at the Daily Express? Because he just sort of walked in, made some witty bon mot, and then walked straight back out again, <coughs> and didn't actually so much as sit down in front of a typewriter. In fact, when he finally gets to the end of the film, and the start of the film, bookends it, 
He still doesn't touch a typewriter. He goes to sit at one. He goes, no, nah, I don't fancy that. Phone someone up and says, put me through to someone who can talk, use a typewriter. But he could he could use it because the <laughs> ribbon had melted. It melted, exactly. That's the thing. But Sterling himself wasn't allowed to actually do anything anyway. He was already on mm. uh, sort of like, uh, you like know, the final leaf, part. Really, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah, he'd done something. Mm. Yeah, he'd, he'd been a hot shot writer, but he'd done something and fucked up. Whether just drinking too much when he was married, broke up, but he was mm. he's kind of on leave, but he's still hanging around the office. Yeah, mm. He probably tried it on with the Queen mm. or something like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, because his Queen name is. is a brand brand name, like as an article writer, because mm. they have that bit where other people are, you know, writing articles for him, and he's going out mm. into his byline. Mm. Uh, and that's because you know they're they're covering for him to see if he gets his shit together or not, or and if he doesn't, he's going to get shit canned. Yeah. So yeah. did we find out what he had actually done? I don't think we did, did we? Tried it on with the queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, he seems to try it on with any any sort of like woman that's within vicinity. So um, yeah. Well, drink was definitely go. involved. Trying it on mm. was definitely involved, and then you had that moment where he's. He's gone to, oh, I forget the name of the building now, where he's trying to worm his way in. and the oh, Meteorological he, Society. That's it, yeah. And mm. he, he goes into the first office and he just barges in. And the guy there gives you a couple of hints of, you know, you've tried this before. You, your your mm. shitty ways of doing things are mm. ludicrous. You won't get anything from us. And then bursting into another door and getting in trouble again. Mm. He's clearly done that before. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was... It's it, yeah. I I was kind of he was kind of the the weakest link in terms of the main characters, not the fucking Daily Express editor who who clearly who clearly should not have been put in front of a camera or in front of anyone at all. Do, I mean, he was think, home video kind of quality. He was. Do we think mm-hmm. Stenning right? Mm-hmm. If you put him in sort of like you know to, context of today, do you think? Um, Stenning would have been hauled up on some sort of phone tapping charge. Um, does I get the feeling? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. most like likely. Hacking Anything someone's mobile story. phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. saying he's the Piers Morgan of this? <laughs> um, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> well, it is. Well, it is interesting. It is interesting to um, to note that he does make some kind of comments about the world going soft and sort of like there's there's the kind of implication that when the world turns to shit, that's when the teenagers rock up and the beatniks. Oh, he would have been <laughs> calling everyone woke, wouldn't he? Oh, you're so woke. You're, yeah, you're you're not hot. It's not hot. There the was sun's woke. Yeah, Bloody snowflakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, there was that whole because that was the whole thing. It was that kind of like, oh, the world's gone bloody soft, you know, and sort of thing. And it's like, really, it appears to be on fire and colouring towards the sun. <laughs> yeah. And then, then it's like, oh, look, there's bloody teenagers, and they're they're playing like music, which is interesting because Monty Norman, who did the um, music Bond for, theme for Bond theme, yeah. yeah, did quote unquote beat Nick music for this film. <laughs> Well, that was my favourite credit in this movie. <laughs> exactly, right at the start, beat this yeah. music. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so it was kind of interesting because it was like, actually, I didn't know if there was a kind of a sort of subtext of the beatniks or 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 basically not taking yourself so seriously is what gets the whole thing. Not doing any work is what got the whole thing sort of started. Mm-hmm. The fact that he kept fucking off and not being in the newsroom and just milling about in a sort of semi-drunken stupor meant he was out to see the sunspots yeah. and notice the sun in the first place. And every time he was kind of, shall we say, embracing the the hippie lifestyle of kind of you know trying it on with the lady and all that kind of stuff, it always it always moved the plot along. It always Every time he he sort of stopped being a straight jacket and kind of being a you know a, a just a straightforward journo and being a you know geezer at the desk jockey, as soon as he stopped doing that, every time he did that, something he was always around to discover something new by taking the radical route, man. Well, he he took the photo of the eclipse as well, didn't exactly. he? Exactly, he took mm. the photo of the eclipse. Um, he noticed the sunspots. Um. 
you know, he was he was trying it on with the the what I'm going to call Janet the Weather Girl, and um, <laughs> Janine the Weather Girl, sorry, and you know, and then you know, and every time you know, and all the time, it's just like every time he goes down that sort of like, hey man, I'm not going to be straight laced, you know. Suddenly, he discovers something new that the that the squares back in the office wouldn't notice. Yeah, I was just kind of wondering if there was kind of some kind of weird, you know, pro hippie subtext kind of going on there. Probably, <coughs> probably. He, um, I've I've got to ask as well. Mm. Um, looking at the guy who played Stenny, right? Mm. Looking at his build. Look at his like, you know, his his face and listening to his voice. Mm. Do we think they tried to get Richard Burton for this part? Uh, interesting. They probably have liked Richard Burton because um, he sounds an awful. If you listen to him in places, his voice kind of has that resonance to it. Hmm. And he's kind of the same build as Richard Burton. I'm thinking Richard Burton, or if wet, this bloke. <laughs> <laughs> and it was wet, obviously, soaking. Well, I so, don't know because yeah. he he was in a lot of I've recognised him from other places. He he was quite a sort of well, I wouldn't say jobbing actor, but he was certainly one who'd been on like a number of things at the time. Like, um, oh god, I saw him in like one of those Hammer Horror kind of Journey to the Centre of the Earth type mm. things. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just I'm just now looking through his IMDb. I'm just going to see if I can find it. Yeah, he was in things like Armchair Theatre. You know, wee, yes, yeah. and all that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, oh, um, they used to scare the shit out of me. That yeah. just that opening sequence, and then the fingers go over the edge of the seat. <laughs> ah, <laughs> fuck off! The fuck I always scary. remember the was it the the one about the faceless nun. Oh, God, Jesus Christ! As quiet Shut, as a nun. Quiet yeah. as a nun. Shat my off. pants watching that one yeah. as a little boy. Oh, I really yeah. did. Yeah, I can't. I, that yeah. sounds <laughs> awful. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, you it would was. want you, you you would be full blown bag of potatoes, <laughs> roast yep. roast roast chicken, and uh, a Yorkshire put the size of your head to protect you from the horror on the screen. Yeah, it, there you go. He was on First Men mm. in the Moon. There you go. Yes, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the hero in that, wasn't he? Gotcha. Mm. And yeah, he was in a couple of other bits like um. Oh, there you go. He was in um the you know the other the other th- one thriller. You know, the which was the other kind of armchair theatre yes, kind of yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. <clears throat> anyway, sorry, I'm just getting off off topic. So, what about? I mean, because we because we're kind of moving on. And I'm very aware that we we sort of dragged out the week thing, so mm-hmm. we're we're running long um, again. Um, what about the what about the actual ending? How do we feel about the ending? Because you you touched upon it briefly with the whole sort of like two possible endings in the newspaper and yeah. all that kind of stuff. How did, did how do you feel it went? Or how did you feel about the ending to start with? I mean I loved just, it. I thought perfect. Absolutely yeah. just end it there. That's great. Don't show us the outcome. Let the audience make their own mind up. Yeah. Because no you're never gonna be happy with the ending of that film, right? Or the, mm. nobody's gonna be hundred percent happy with it. You know, the the public in general. So yeah. just stop it just before mm. um, you find out the results of the explosions. Yeah, interesting. Do that. Yeah. Well, you you say that, but anyway, I'll I'll go. I'll get to that in a second. Jim, what about you? I think the ending is just spot on. Mm. I think it's the uh, as Darren rightly says, whichever one they showed you, you mm. would be happy with. Yeah, it'd, it'd be always that at least half the odds. Be like. <sighs> Mm. Whereas this is just, I mean, you know, I think as I get older, I do have less time for that. Oh, you decide. No, you tell me, motherfucker. That's what I paid you for. <laughs> tell me a story. Come on. But, um, th- and there's very few people who can actually, and very few stories that can kind of pull off that ambiguous ending or mm. that ambiguous interpretation. But this is one of them. Mm. And the way it does it, though, mm. the way it just pans across to the other headline. Yep. That's just oh, chef's kiss. That's that's beautiful cinema and beautiful storytelling. Mm, yeah. Again, understated. Yeah. Just indeed. There you go. Roll yeah. credits. We're done. Yeah. What about what about you? Happy Elton? dreams. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't have nightmares, children. Um, what about you, Elton? I thought it was 
as as you guys have said, the perfect ending for it. Mm. And it makes sense because we start the film and we're already 10 days after the first explosion. Mm. So we're already in. There is already momentum. And yet yeah. nobody has cobbled together the explosions and then the um uh, the the lunar eclipse coming on so soon and mm. and uh, I think with the ending if you'd because we had the explosions are we then to wait another 10 days to find out you know it, it would have dragged on the ending a bit too much and how do you show that mm. how do you show that it got back to normal did it stop it or did it put it back to normal or what we don't need to know that mm. I think it is a I, I, I think it's more of a well, how would you like your your life to go on? Mm. You know, if you want to carry on fucking around with nuclear weapons, do we do we repair the Earth with the nuclear weapons that we destroyed it with? Mm. But then what happens? So I think it's asking the audience a question of what path do you want to go down? So do you think it's like an anti anti nuclear testing? I think it is. Yeah, film more yeah. than anything yeah. else. Yeah, it's fair. I think that's fair. Um, the re- the reason I was asking was because in the opening bookend, shall we say, mm-hmm. and he sits down and it's all melting and everything's melting and, and nothing's working and there's nobody around and it's got that kind of real apocalyptic vibe and they've even tinted the black and white sepia. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and he he starts recounting the the story to the stenographer. He says it's been ten days since the second explosion. So I don't actually think it worked because oh, hold on. no, the the second explosion did come after um a, it, there was a there was a distance between the first explosion that the Americans did. Um, I think it was the Russians that which one was it? Was it the Russians that did it first, or was it the the Americans? No, no. The, the point was that they both fired at the same time, didn't they? That was that was the thing that threw the Earth off its axis. Yeah. But when he's doing the thing at the beginning, the bookend of the sten to the stenographer, mm-hmm. because he's because his typewriter's melted. He's and he's recounting it down the phone, which also made me laugh because I thought at some point he's going to take that that telephone off his ear and he's going to be all glue and he's going to be like. <laughs> But um, <laughs> but it's like scanners all over. Again. <laughs> yeah, he's like Jesus fucking Christ, my ear. Um, <laughs> it's like mozzarella. <laughs> Somebody played one of those oil jokes on him. Where, you know, look at this pair of binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that is actually after they've done the the rescue the rescue bombs. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> yeah. So. Even though there's an ambiguity at the end of the film, if you go back to the very beginning of the film when he's recalling recalling the whole story, the ambiguity isn't there. It's it's like oh tough shit, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's all gone. It's all melting. Everything's still <laughs> melting, and there's nobody around, and everything's gone orange. You know, and it's like he, and he says something like it's been it's been a week since since the second set of detonations or something like that. Well, I was thinking about that. And so the first detonation would knock you off your orbit, yeah? So Mm. the second ones, it wouldn't put you back to where you were. It would just re-stabilize you, but in a closer orbit. (laughs) That's the way I'm thinking of it. Well, it it depends, doesn't it? I mean, mean, this is the crazy thing with this kind of science. You... Yeah, you know, orbital mechanics isn't just like a case of just poke it and let it all swing into place. <laughs> oh, you've, no, no, you've dented it. If you tap it the other side with the hammer, mm, that's yeah. right, the Ted style. Yeah, just yeah, just go around the back and just give it a gentle <laughs> tap, <laughs> boink. Um, but no, so you know, you, you know, oh, no. I'm, tem- I'm tempted to do Wandering Earth for the next movie now. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, if you want to, that's fine. Just, just, just bear in mind you'll get some voiceovers from me. I'll tell you that. Um, God, yeah. Yeah, fucking mainly featuring, that mainly featuring the freeze and another thing. Yeah, ah, <laughs> you fucker. Um, 
But now you can do Wandering Earth if you like. Um, but no, I, I just, it was just that I, I kind of, I saw that ambiguous ending, and then my brain went back to the to the start, and I suddenly thought, no, that's not an ambiguous ending. That's the end of the story that he was telling on the phone. Mm. The story he's telling on the phone, that's where it ends, and you go, right, fine. But if you go back to where he is on the phone, that's 10 days after the ending of the film, and it's like, oh... <laughs> I think we, I think we can put the right addition to bed, Japs. <laughs> it's like I think we're doomed. But um, I, I, t- yeah. I mean, how did you think about the the? Because we'll do this and then we'll wrap it up. But what did you think about the um, the actual reaction to the disaster once everyone realised they had like eleven days or something before the Earth went splat. <laughs> Because everyone's like standing in the in the newsroom, and then the 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 prime minister goes, "You may have noticed it's been getting a tad warm, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The scientists are doing their thing. We don't know if it'll work, but they're just going to try it anyway. God have blo- mercy on our souls. By the way, I've got a working fridge. Good night. <laughs> I mean, what did you think about that? Because then everyone else, you know, Liam McKern and Co. all just go right back to work. <laughs> I, I think some aspects of life do have to continue, mm. and that is part of the apocalyptic movie that you have to mm. you have to take that journey of what stays the same, what changes, and who wants to fuck around with that. Mm. And I, I, I think, think you see it a little bit yeah. in this. Mm. I think it's actually eleven days though. If you're like, it's like twelve hours from now. Mm. But eleven mm. days, people. Go, oh, all right. Well, um, I'll just I'll just I'll just, just finish what I'm doing here now, and um, I'm, well, I'm going to work tomorrow. I don't mm. know. I'll, I'll think about. It. I'll see. You know, I'll mm. have a pint down the pub like I normally do. We'll talk about it with my mates and decide. Oh, I'm going to go in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's 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 the hitchhiker's guide <laughs> thing. You know. Uh, in in le- you know in a few hours the world's about to end. It must be Thursdays. I never could get the hang of Thursdays, and then they wander off down the pub. You know, it's just like okay. <laughs> but it's like I don't know if you remember when the Falklands War broke out, mm. and also kind of I remember like when the Russians invaded Afghanistan. Mm. You know, so you know, you know, quite young, just starting my teens when those things happened. Mm. But I do remember particularly the Falklands War thinking, Christ, is this going to be the spark that starts the big one? Mm. And if so, why, why why do I have to go to school? <laughs> it's the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. But that was one of those things that, mm. like, you know, it looks ridiculous now. But at the time, for a couple of days, it was a bit scary. Mm. With, with America going, we'll back up England, and Russia going, we, we, might, we might back Argentina. And it's yes. kind of like, could this be the stupid little pissing contest that kicks off the big one? Almost yeah. by accident. Yeah, that's you know, true. and the kind of, and it was kind of, I remember kind of the weirdness about going. You, you watch the news, go, blah, 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 global tensions rise. And I'm like, go, on, go to school. What, Rick? Do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> like, at the end of the week, we'll be dead by lunchtime. <laughs> <So> you <laughs> might be flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I've only got, if I've only got five <laughs> minutes, if I've only got five minutes, why the fuck have you put a banana in my lunchbox? Yes, <laughs> mum. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just, it was, it was just interesting, just, just how everyone just kind of went, eh, okay, back to work. What about you, Dale? I mean, did you feel about that? You were all right with it? Um, I, uh, going back to what Jim was talking about there, mm. about like things like you know the invasion of Af- Afghanistan and stuff mm. like this, mm. I must admit, I the most recent time in history that I remember feeling like shit this is it mm. this is where we're you know the, the thing the world's going to end now and that was when the plane struck the trade center because mm. my first thought is the americans are going to go crazy and they are going to literally they're going to nuke someone aren't they mm. and this is going to be it mm. but i remember just thinking that with the resigned acceptance <laughs> <laughs> of like i did the british thing i mm. just you know, carry on. Mm. Don't panic. Carry on. Mm. Oh dear! I thought yeah. we'd started. <laughs> exactly. And I think they 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 got the they understood 
the the people that they were in, you know dealing with in this story mm. the british public we've been through we you know at that time we'd just been coming out the arse end of world war Two mm. um when this film was made you know they were still getting over it they were still the memories were still fresh yeah. and mm. look at how people were then there, there could have been an apocalypse here england could have been wiped out altogether mm. but um you know bombs dropping every bloody night um but still people kind of like yeah so let's go watch the football you know mm. or <laughs> let's go to the pub myrtle and have a have a stout you yeah. know that sort of thing <laughs> so um i think they they got the the mood i think they got the mood right i mean you can never tell mm. how people are going to go mm. you know i mean if you watch i mean the, the if you watch things like threads mm. as well yeah right with the imminent destruction the only time people fucking lose it is when a bomb they see the mushroom cloud in the distance near bradford and it's like shit this is happening yeah and then you get the uh everybody going losing their fucking shit like uh, mm. the the one image of that that really stays with me is the one of the woman looking at the explosion and fucking pissing herself and yeah she see her do it <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's like that is the ultimate in fear. That is that is it. You know, it's like somebody just drops all the facade and lets that take over. And mm. yeah, what am I to do in this situation? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think you know Jim sums it up quite well with the whole thing of the run up to it. Mm. You know, when it's the disaster is not actually there on the doorstep happening there. Mm. People's attitudes are well. Let's get some stuff done. Before yeah, it happens. I've still got time. Yeah, yeah. The old, um, the old, oh, a nuclear bomb went off in Bradford and did a hundred million quids worth of yeah, they're renovations. Not right. They're not there though. <laughs> this is it. It's not personal to them. No, it's when you get it being personal, then that's when the whole mm. sort of stiff upper lip thing goes right out the window. Yeah, yeah, and then they just become a panicking mess. Yeah, cool. I mean, because. Yeah, it seemed initially a bit weird to me, I'll be honest with you. But then what I found kind of interesting was kind of it was like a ripple that they sort of everyone's kind of not sure. And then by the time you get to the end, you know, everyone's gone absolutely do fucking la, you know, absolutely mental, you know, starting fights and, you know, just randomly bullying people in their own baths. You know, I, I seem to remember. <laughs> I seem to remember something very similar. You know, mm. people bullying people and stashing stuff away happening quite recently. I, mm. I can't think of when that happened. <laughs> I actually, I, uh, I, people I fucking people over for a place in the queue. You know, uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. It's funny. Funny as you mentioned that, I don't know. I don't know why, but it does seem to ring slightly Doesn't true. It? Doesn't yeah. it just... I don't think they punched them down lift shafts so. though. Uh, well, that's only because there wasn't a lift shaft in the Aldi by the toilet tube <laughs> section. Exactly. Yeah. They obviously true, had yeah. enough toilet paper back then. Yeah. Pa- toilet paper was not looked upon as a <laughs> as a high placed commodity that you could. Um, you well, know. you know, yeah. basically, if if it was Elton more had, kindling at that stage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if Elton had if Elton had been doing his job and putting a few more fucking lifts, then maybe there would have been more of a chance. Yeah. You know, doing my job. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, I wasn't doing my job at all, was I? No, no. no. no you see, that's totally, gonna, totally, I'm mate. Gonna, I'm going to use <laughs> that the killer issue, disease yeah. out there. Elton, right. build me a lift shaft so I can punch this fucker down it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> build it, build it right by the toilet tube line. <laughs> <laughs> so I may, so I may destroy this person utterly. <laughs> build, me, build, me a, build me a toilet tube disposal chute and call it a lift. To, I want you to build me a lighthouse with a big metal staircase in it, right? <laughs> so I can get someone at the top of it, tie them to a chair, and then fucking kick them down it. Yeah, tie them to a deck chair. Now you yeah. can do with what you like with the, the lighthouse after that. I don't care. I just want it for that one thing. Yeah. See, that, you, you need you need you need to pull your finger out, Elton. You need, yeah. <laughs> need we need more ran, we need more random lifts, <laughs> just place <placed, placed, laughs> so that we can do damage. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, any any last thoughts? Anyone got any additional thoughts on this? Because I know we're running a bit long, so 
Anyone no, got? but I I was uh, pleasantly surprised to watch it. So thank you, Jim. Mm, yeah, I, I, mm. I echo that. I was I wasn't expecting a lot at the start when everyone's speaking all like this. Tell everybody, sorry, chaps. Hey, Cockney. Yes, you are an alcoholic, and you have been driving through London. Okay, yeah. fine. Does anyone want to look at the uh, nuclear bomb bomb spots? Okay, right, fine. I I think when you you come across these movies, sometimes they can be like the the planet of the giant ants or or whatever. You know, oh, it, it'd be crazy. Like S- it was silly it? Little um, things it like came that. from mm. the desert, or it? Yeah. Mm. And yeah. it, it could be way over the top. Where you think, okay, I kind of know what I'm getting into on this. But this was uh, the the day the earth caught fire. So you, you imagine lots of fires and lots of bombs going off. And I, I think I was thinking of a more of a a nuclear holocaust mm. type mm. thing. But it yeah. wasn't. It, it it was totally different from that. So I I was pleasantly surprised. That's cool. Um, Darren, any last thoughts? Um, no, but I think we should look at more films from this sort of era. I think, yeah, you know, just do a few more of these sort of mm. um, fun, naive look, looking fil- uh, naive films that had a mm. yeah, just a not so much cynicism behind them. Oh, I don't know. I think this had plenty of cynicism <laughs> in it. <laughs> it was British. It in... I mean, the American ones less so, but this one. Had, yeah, this yeah, one had I cynicism in spades. This did. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. I can only echo what what everyone else has said. I th- I thought this was this was a great little film, and that, uh, you know, and a re- good reminder of like how concept concept and ideas and execution can overcome any limitation of special effects mm. or you know the time you know the story the time it was written in. Um, Look, the only the, the only... fog is rolling in. Oh, he's yeah. devoured that ship. Yes, the, yeah. The fog, the fog appears to have climbed out of the Thames. Well, I tell you what, let's just go up to the roof. But um, let's go up to the top of the bus where we are <laughs> over the top of the fog. Yeah. What ding, do you ding. think, Professor Quatermass? I think we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all gone to shit. If anybody needs me, I'll be down the pub. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to roll up a big fatty bum batty and have a wank. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I was going to say was before I before I end it off is is that I I genuinely thought it was a film which maybe I was getting completely confused with because of the title, but there was a film years ago where people abandon Earth using a rocket which is on, like, a massive rail yeah, I know that you're flies up into... Yeah. When, when, when worlds Earth, collide. When worlds collide, yeah. That's it. George Powell. That's it, because mm-hmm. cause the Earth's going into the sun or smashing into another planet or something, isn't it? That's yeah, right. another planet into the solar system. And that's a similar sort of countdown of... Um, mm. This this planet is going to destroy the Earth, but that that's to say that's told from the top brass and the people working on a plan. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. It's it's very to say that what I like about this is that kind of street level. Mm. It's kind of if one of these big science fiction or disaster movie or horror movie things actually happened, how would it be for people like us? Mm. Well, like it, like mm. da- Darren said, you know. Big boom, fatty boom, batty, and porn hub. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Dad. Are you coming? Are you coming into the bomb shelter? <laughs> Give me ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what about you, Jim? Any last thoughts? Um, so I think it's a, a great, a great movie, and uh, it's, mm. it should be a lot better known. Um, mm. It was one of those movies I'd seen. You know, I just mentioned it, and I'm going, "What?" Mm. <laughs> um, but you know, so, so uh, if I can introduce a few more people to it, you can uh, <laughs> spread mm. the word a bit further, because it's a film that I think is still relevant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's possibly it, increasingly so, to be honest. Yeah, terrifyingly so, in fact. <laughs> um, yeah, I de- I agree, I agree. And yeah, if you haven't if you haven't seen it, you know, put hang your cyn- cynicism on on a hook and sit down and watch this film. It's only ninety three minutes, so it's it's well worth your time, I think, definitely. 
definitely and yeah it's great and if you want to send if you do watch it and you want to send some feedback in send it into feedback at blackdogpodcast.com or put it on the facebook group which is facebook.com slash groups slash the black dog podcast right we'll leave it there we'll leave it there i did have another thing to ask but i'll just stop there otherwise we're going to be going way over the midnight midnight line um and so now it's time to put that film to bed move over to the next one which is elton's choice so we're gonna go (laughs) we're going from day the earth caught fire to we're going right up to date 2021 movie and Mm -hmm. it's called the power of the dog oh cheeky it's available on netflix it's Mm. a drama western i've seen it i flipping loved it Mm. and i'm interested to see what you guys thought of it i haven't seen it it's the one with fumble ditch bumble clark yep yeah (laughs) 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 yeah cool Okay. Um. Yeah. I'll, I'm. I'm really interested to see this. Okay. Um. Jim, have you seen this? No, I've not. No. Fantastic, Darren. Uh. No, not at all. Wow. So we're in a we're in a really mad sort of topsy turvy world. Down is up. Cats and dogs. and dogs. Yeah. Elton's seen it, and none of us have. Yep. Oh my word. Okay. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Power of the Dog available on Netflix with. Is it Jesse Plemons and, like I say, Finkelstitch? Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Fink, Finkelstitch. Do, douchey, douchey, douchey oh. bum. Of course not, Vessie Ventura. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And and did you say Kirsten Dunst? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And, you, and you've seen it and you like it, presumably. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm not going to look it up or what it's about because beyond the fact that I've seen it, that benadryl benadryl cumble bitch is <laughs> he's wearing a cowboy hat so yep. uh yeah we'll have to see won't we so ladies and gentlemen there you go next week's movie the power of the dog i think we're going right off the right off the prairie range so to speak ah see what i did there <laughs> and um yes we'll be back for that so great i'm looking forward to that indeed right <laughs> So we'll get we'll get that and we'll do that and um now before we hang up our spurs and ride off into the sunset, um it's time to find out what's happening over on hipdegoria dot com. Jim. Ah uh, well uh, this weekend on From the Great Library of Dreams, I've had a vintage folk horror story mm-hmm. um called Magic Wood. No, mm-hmm. Wood Magic, sorry. <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> I was gonna say, do we not do phrasing anymore? <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, on Hypnagoria uh, this week, I'll be doing another chat from Universal Horror, talking mm-hmm. about uh, it came from outer space, another uh, fifty science fiction movie. Yes, not not quite not quite as um as as down to earth and prescient as Day the Earth Caught Fire, but nevertheless uh, fun. No, interesting film though. Um, yeah, yeah, de- or definitely if you're not seen it for a while, definitely go back to it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's. So I think it's. it's uh, I don't think I've seen it since it was on BBC Two and their sci-fi season, sort of early eighties. So yeah, I might have to check that out. Cool, excellent. And what about you, Elton? I have released some videos on YouTube of me playing a silly video game. It's all up there now. So, okay. uh, and uh, where is it? Uh, you can go to roadtomedia dot com, and there's a little picture of. Uh, the long dark click on that and it'll take it take you to the youtube page nice and there's 10 episodes no 12 episodes up there at the moment nice and there are more to come excellent so if you want to see a man running around like a headless chicken trying to catch a (laughs) rabbit while screaming (laughs) in the forest that's these are the series of videos for you do you know what? You're not far off. There. I know. I saw the first one. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but the the editing and I, I think the storytelling get a bit better as mm. as we go through. So yeah, uh, be it's kind a on the first process. couple. Yeah, it's a learning process. Always, blimey. Right, cool. Um, and any other podcasts? Anything going on? Uh, yeah, but I'll let Darren explain that. 
Oh, mm. cheeky dangler. Indeed. Go on in. So over to the cheeky dangler, Darren. Over to cheeky dangler. I've got my cheeky danglers out. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, this week, my danglers have been cheekying uh, in the direction of the Shonky Lab. Ooh. And uh, am I allowed to tell them what the subject is, Elton? Yeah, yeah. Say? It's not out just yet, but yes. No, but it will it. be. Um, mm. It's an up and coming. What we started out as being was a subject of cinema mm. and our experiences with it and what we change um, and what we like, that kind of thing. But uh, of course, uh, with me and Elton, it kind of went off on all kinds of tangents and flew off in different directions so uh let's just say it's about cinema to begin with can i can i make a prediction having not Go having on. heard it is it about 15 or 20 seconds before you start complaining about people moaning in cinemas and talking uh, in cinemas and using cameras in cinemas oh no no that 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 sort of thing i would not mention anything about cameras but uh there is uh, a little bit later on about um you know, talking and stuff like this and how we resolve the issue. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a few legal issues we'd have to clean up, but... Uh, file nice. was mentioned. Yeah, file was mentioned. <laughs> nice. So, uh, sometimes you have to use fire to kill it dead. Anyway, yes. Um, yeah. Completely kill it yeah. Cool. Okie dokie. Right, well, there you go. And I guess that's over at rogue2media.com. It will be, yes, yes. Brilliant. Okie dokie, chaps. Right, um, I've got nothing to promote at all. At all. I've done no art. I've done no nothing. And I'm just sitting here like a useless lump thinking I'm editing this video, this podcast. That's it. Jobs are good. Been on a holiday. I'm not doing anything else. You're happy with that, aren't you? Not really, but, you know, we take what we can get. Anyway... (laughs) So, there you go. So, like I say, ladies and gentlemen, join us on the Facebook group. You know where. We've done the link enough times. Join uh, Jim on hypnagoria.com and join Ro- uh, Darren and Elton over at Rogue 2 Media uh, for their thing about moaning about cinema. It just becomes an immense shouting at clouds again, doesn't it? Tell me. <laughs> yeah, just tell but me. the cinema <laughs> version. <laughs> but the cinema <laughs> version. Do you know how much it costs for a bucket of popcorn? I'll guarantee you. <laughs> anyway, right. Okay, well that's that. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Elton. No problem. My and pleasure. thank you again all for listening. Thank you for coming back after two weeks. And um ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you all next week for the power of the dog. And not Catwoman, which is its sequel. <laughs> um <laughs> So until then, take care. We'll see you all soon. Till then, tatty bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ta-da. There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road It's where I'll always be Every stop I make I make a new friend Can't stay for long Just turn around and I'm gone again Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here.